Hey guys, welcome to the Daily Hi-Fi. We're excited to have you hanging out with us tonight. We're going to be talking all things home theater, two channel, music, just have some fun with you like we always do every single week. Chano's going to be a little bit late and Aaron, not sure. Is he coming in, Joe? Uh, hope so. Right, How you doing, man? You feeling good? Am, Last dude, time I'm, you said you I'm were a, a little under the weather, but... Yes. Yeah, I had a cold and I was trying to barrel through that. It's always difficult when your job is to speak. Yeah. And then you've got either laryngitis. I used to get laryngitis once a year. Uh -huh. But once I started working from home, pretty much I don't ever get that anymore. But you still get the occasional cold. And when it does, it always sits right on my vocal cords. Just makes it really deep. So, Yeah, I haven't but, yeah. been sick in like a couple of years. <laughs> Yeah, and typically you know, I don't, but yeah. something happened. And I picked up something from somewhere. Like I said, I don't, I don't miss being sick. Yeah, it's not, it's not fun. Like uh, no. you know, it, what's no. worse is even like when you're sick and the kids are sick too. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you remember what that's like when, especially when they're like, little. Everybody's sick. You're like, I yeah. gotta take care of you, and I'm feeling sick. Yeah, like, this is exactly. Not fun. When they're older, it's a little bit easier, but. When they're young, man, it's like, oh, your heart just breaks and it's like nothing you can do for them. And they're mm -hmm. just, they feel terrible and they want to feel better and you give them the medicine and it just takes time, man. But yeah, we're getting ready to go on a trip, taking my family up to Vermont, doing some snowboarding and snow skiing. So yeah. we're flying 11 of us up there, even my grandson. So flying. he's only, oh yeah, he ain't driving, man. I don't know. You drive to some pretty <laughs> crazy places. So I don't know. Yeah, no, it's a whole lot quicker to fly. Um, so we're excited about that. Going up to a place called Smuggler's Notch. Sometimes I call it Smug's Notch, but <laughs> me and Jessica, or Jessica and I went. Smuggler's Notch. Let's see. It was, I think it was probably about six years ago, maybe seven years ago. It was just she and I. And that was the first day I bought a GoPro. For the first okay. time I had a GoPro. And so I took it out and I jumped the first ramp. Fine. Jumped the second ramp. Fine. Went back up. This is the last day. Jessica was done. She's like, I'm, I'm cold. I'm going back in. She said, you go play on the train park. You've been wanting to hit that. So I go back up the lift, come back down the second run, jump the first ramp, fine. And the last one, I'm like, dude, we're going big or we're going home. And we ended up doing that both. It doesn't sound like it's going to end well. Yeah, we went. Yeah, that's famous last words. Watch <laughs> this. Yeah, it sucked. Um, I way overshot the, the landing. I mean, way overshot it knife the board straight into the snow spun me around hit the butt hit the back the last thing that hit was the back of my head Ooh. and later on i found out it literally cracked my helmet in two. Oh yeah so if i didn't have a helmet on it would have probably split my noggin open so it was it was good i ended up taking a trip to the emergency room in an ambulance first time i'd ever done that yeah the only time i'd ever done that but so we're not going to do that again we're going to be a little bit more laid back i still don't mind hitting the blacks and double blacks but were, were you shook um, up a little bit after that though? Like, like immediately after that happened? I don't, I don't like... remember probably about 15 to 30 minutes of that whole ordeal. Like the last thing I remember was coming down going, Oh crap. Like I knew it was bad, like really bad. So was your memory better before that incident? Nah, nah. <laughs> I've always, always had, a, yeah, I've, I've always had a horrible memory, but yeah, I was in and out of consciousness. Um, my GoPro was still filming it fell off my head landed in the in snow and out of consciousness that's mm -hmm. that's not good yeah the guys you could hear them for a while it was just quiet and then somebody skis up and they're like hey bro are you okay bro are you okay and then um eventually a snowboarder crawls over sees my gopro grabs it crawls it over to me puts it upright and you see me just laying there man i'm barely moving and they're like dude don't try to get up just lay here but we never in that whole i don't know 10 minute video you never see the ski tr ski patrol, uh -huh. and I don't remember any of that. If it wasn't for the video, I would have no recollection of that. So there's at least 15 to 30 minutes that I don't remember. The next thing I remember was just like in the movies where everything's blurry and dark, mm. and it starts to get brighter and in focus, and there's a guy leaning over me. He's like, sir, can you tell me your name? I'm like, yeah, it's Michael Stevens. He's like, uh -huh. do, you know, do you know your birthday? And I tell him. And I'm thinking, oh, crap, he thinks I'm brain dead. And so I just start spouting off my anniversary <laughs> date, everything, just to see if I know all the answers. I'm good. <laughs> I wanted to No, I was trying to figure out if I'm jacked, you know. You want to say what's up to some of these people in the yeah. chat? Yeah, man, I even see Villa Man. What's up, buddy? Good to see you, Cleveland. Tim's in the house. Villa Mike. Man, perfect. Going. Oh, that, you nailed it, man. Yeah. Victor, true voice of reason. Good to see you. Ike's in the house. 
Xander, Gary, Ronster, Slim, as always, Derek, Jed, Billy. What is happening, guys? Hope y'all are doing well. Yeah. We say what's up to Tim already, yeah? Reverend I did. Slim. Yeah, Tim was way at the top. Well, Actually, care. he was probably the he was the second one after the villain man. All right. Yeah. C Biggs in the house. Yeah. 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 We got some regulars here. Absolutely. Oh. And Rife Wave, good to see you. Sorry, I had to do a few things because it was kind of last minute. I'm always last minute when it comes to setting these things up. Yeah. There's a lot to do, you know. After show stuff that I have to set up. That was everything, so. man. But yeah, Villa Man, I I what is the last video I saw? I saw him uh reviewing something recently. I saw he said some um, uh had some Arendel speakers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's had those for a while. Yeah, they're smaller ones though. Oh, he got a new set. Okay. Yeah, a whole new set. So, you know. I didn't get to watch the whole video. Mm -hmm. I just only go to the part that says perfect, and then that's it. <laughs> he just, man, he's killing your analytics, Bill, man. Oh. <laughs> no, I watch him. I, I'll, I'll watch him. <laughs> yeah, later. right. I will. And you're like, oh, I he will. closes, closes the browser. YouTube says, oh, that video sucked. It must have been uh, some clickbait stuff that Bill, man, was they, putting up don't there. Don't they track if I hit, like, save to watch later? I don't like, know. I feel like that should count for something. Like, yeah. it should give you more if I save it. Yeah. Like, oh, if I saved it, that means it's a good video. I don't it's know. Like probably shame. not. Probably not. Sorry. It's funny though. The the longer I'm on YouTube, the less YouTube I watch. And part of it is not because I don't want to watch other people. I mean, like I used to watch everybody's content. I mean, I tried to. Mm -hmm. I mean, I had like ten or fifteen different people that I was following in the home theater space, and I'd watch all of them every time they had a video. And now it's like just the more this thing grows, and the more responsibilities you have, and it's just like, oh man, when do I have time? You know, so yeah. but I, I try to catch up with everybody every once in a while. Yeah, well, I think uh, I think there are more people maybe reviewing this stuff too. There like are. I, first, I remember 100%. thinking like, man, there's nobody really talking about this stuff. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I see new faces all the time, and that's good. Yeah. yeah, absolutely, man. And like Jeremy, I mean, good friend of mine, and uh, he's doing great with his channel, and he's pushing away and. So we got all these other little guys that are, you know, they're making their space and they've got their own kind of way in their style. And I think it's awesome, man. The more yeah. the merrier. Yeah. No, I don't like any of them. <laughs> Anybody else surprised? Yeah. The, the, moment, I, you surprised? the moment I see somebody else, I'm like, I look like Borat, you know? You're like, where's that block? But how do I, how do I like let YouTube know they're terrible? Yeah. Get their channel uh, banned. No, so goes, you know what it is? It's them. just. Uh, to be to be honest, it's just that I'm more, um, you know, critical. I guess you could say, yeah. because well, you I, like, you're like you say, you like, like when you're in the line of work, right? It's yeah. like okay, let's see. I'm not looking at it from a, a point of view of like, oh, let me just enjoy this. Yeah. So, oh, let me see. Let me see. Yeah, maybe I can learn something. Maybe it's you know whatever. Joe reports. Joe, my Joe watches my videos. He's like, that's whacked. Oh my gosh, who man? Nobody's gonna believe that garbage. No, it's, I mean, honestly, it just goes to show there's there's somebody for everyone. You know what I mean? Like, for me, I know that my videos are not for everybody because sometimes right. I want to get into the details. And sure. I know for a fact that most people don't really want to go there. Most mm -hmm. of the viewers that I see, mm -hmm. they just they just just tell me what to buy. Yeah, Like, I don't want to know any. Just give me a list yeah. and tell me the yeah. best. And maybe a little bit about why. But yeah. I don't want to know all the details. Does it ever seem odd to you that when you you mention that you're reviewing something and somebody says they'll they'll reply, maybe you do an unboxing and they're like, Man, I can't wait to see your review because I just bought it. No, I get that. I'm like, I get I'm, that. I'm just thinking like, I mean, I think it's great. You want to know what I think about it, but it's almost like I want to validate my purchase. By what you have to say, and it's like, no, man. Well, the, if you did your research and that's you better like though, it, that's better than them asking before they buy. You know what they I mean? Do that too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the crazy thing too. They're like, hey, I'm waiting on your review before I order, and I was like, oh, no pressure there, man, because I'm gonna tell you what I like and what I don't like. If it's if it's great, I'm gonna say how great it is. If it's got yeah. some issues, I'm gonna share with you some issues. So I don't know. I think to me, it's it's about. Kind of like when you're going to go on vacation, right? Mm -hmm. When you go on vacation, there's a lead up time where you're oh, looking forward gosh. to the vacation. Yeah. Oh, I can't wait, right? You have the date set. And then there's the actual date when, mm -hmm. you know, you're actually just in the moment, enjoying the moment. And then if you did it right, hopefully you can look back 
and say, yeah. oh, man, do you remember that time? That was a great time. So it's like a before, during, and after. Yeah. So I think that's how it is with buying stuff, too. It's like, yeah, yeah I can't wait. You know, sometimes I like to research and, and watch videos about something I'm excited about buying because I'm like, oh, I want to know. And then actually going buying it. And yeah. then again, I, I go watch some reviews say like, man, I, well, sometimes I, I have decision, watched, man. sometimes I bought something, watch somebody else's video. And then I learned something about what I bought. I'm like, oh, I didn't know I could do that. So how to use it. Things yeah. like that. Yeah. yeah. Shauna's in the house. Yeah, I know. Shauna you know, will be chat. in hopefully. I know he's doing some, some stuff. Yeah. Um. Yeah. See, Billy says he's a tinkerer, man. So he likes the detailed videos. I like gear that's more complex, so you can always have a reason to mess with it. Yeah. Oh yeah. Part of the fun. Part yeah. of the fun. Yeah. Uh, Reverend Slim said he got his spatial audio calibration toolkit cool, this man. today. Nice menus. Thank you. Nice. Thank you. Thank you. He's. Uh, we credit him with asking Chana to do the speaker pairs section. That entire section is because. Mm -hmm. You requested that specifically. Nice. So if you find that useful, it's because of that guy. And, you know, we kind of just joke around like, man, you know how much work you made trying to do? <laughs> He's like, anyway, he He's does like, a lot for the community, so we it. appreciate him. Yeah, man. Uh, Yeah, but yeah, we started shipping. Chana started shipping all the discs. Mm -hmm. Did you see the picture of all those discs? I did, man. I saw his um, YouTube shorts or TikToks or something that he made. Yeah. One of them. Let me see. If you guys haven't seen it. It just, you know, it looks crazy how many. Like, it's just funny. And, and before before all this, I told Shauna, like, are you sure you want to ship all these? Yeah, dream like, I don't know man. if you understand. Yeah. A thousand discs, like, yeah. sounds like a small number. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like if you get a thousand subscribers, like, eh, yeah. whatever, you know, you yeah. might gain or lose a thousand here and there. But, like, if you were to see a thousand people yeah. in person, you'd be like, dang, that's a lot Probably. of people. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, especially so, you physically got to do every address. Mm -hmm. So kind of the same same thing. Yeah. You know what I mean? Oh, packing look at them. Tim. Packing them is easy, which is nice. You know, well, slide them so. in. Well, I mean, it is. I mean, slide them in, pull the I peel, think, zip it. You have to do like 700 or so. Yeah. So but that's the easy part. But manually, you know, I don't know if he's handwriting them or if he's typing them or whatever. But I think, I think way, he has to, I think he has to uh, print the labels. Mm -hmm. He has to, uh, I think he writes a little personal note mm -hmm. on them. So, yeah. He sprays this cologne in there. He's told me that it's pretty <laughs> sprays, nice. Like, yeah. it, it's it's like first class. Look at this. Tim recognizes that your, your video is darker than normal. You just mentioned that before we got on. Video is darker than normal. Look so, at that. I, yeah, I asked him. Um, well, here, I'll bump it up. That's the cool thing about these fancy, dancy lights, man. I've got one oh, so here. So, it's not your monitor? Because I thought you were saying that you turned on your monitor. Maybe no, was... well, I did. I turned. Now, see. What I've started to do is turn down my monitor so we don't get so much glare in my glasses. Uh -huh. But then I can't physically see, is it exposed properly? Mm. Because see. my monitor is now at 20% versus 80%. So tell me see. that's better. Yeah, I like that. Okay, I like that. See? I shouldn't oh, yeah. be lighter than you. I don't think I'm lighter than you in person. Maybe I am. I haven't got very I'm, much. Sun. I'm, I'll be honest. I'm white. Oh my goodness. I live in Florida. You'd think I'd be in the sun. You too. In like California. Yeah. But, but you have that, you have the I Canon camera. The Canon always makes you look all contra contrasty. Right, like all, all uh, dramatic. Xander appreciate the over there. Xander appreciate the $5 super chat. He says, yeah. bro has DT 9060s and 3700 going to calibrate his setup with the U mic and REW. But would he benefit with the mini DSP over just the Denon sub outs? Thanks. Mm -hmm. DT, so that's a definitive technology mm -hmm. 9060s. Correct. Are those yep. some towers, I think? Correct. Yep. Yeah. And the Denon 3700. Denon yeah. So he's saying, would he benefit from having a mini DSP? Or do you think the Denon would be just enough with the dual sub outs? Oh, you want to you take that? I know what my opinion is. I like the U mic one and I like REW. Um, but here's the thing. If you only have the UMIC one and REW, unless you purchase the, um, multi EQX or you have like a mini DSP two by four HD, you only have the data to know what's going on, but you need something to kind of change, I guess, like EQ and things like that. And so the two by four HD would allow you to do that 
to time align them, to um, EQ them and balance those out. So I think even if you have a UMIC one and REW, you may or may not need to calibrate. You may look at it and go, man, we've got a flat frequency response in the room already. Most of the time, that's not the case, though. Usually you're going to either have to move your subwoofer around the room to try to get a better response, or you'll have to use something like, um, uh, you know, the mini DSP 2x4 mm -hmm. HD, or like I said, Odyssey Multi XT, or X, not XT, what do they call it? The one you use. XT. Um, yeah. Multi QX. Yeah, Multi QX. Yeah. So doing like a manual calibration on that. So, yeah. You know, uh, so. I think people should know that the definitive technology has like built in subs, mm -hmm. you know, in the towers themselves. So I'm not now, sure if that, that's exactly what he means yeah. when he's using the dual sub outs. But let me think here because typically I would recommend the mini DSP 2x4 HD because you can uh, basically, oh, I'm just trying to think of what you can do on the mini DSP that you can't currently can't do, on, do yeah. on Odyssey. Before Odyssey had an issue, actually, mm -hmm. I don't know how many people know this, mm -hmm. but unless you have the latest version of Multi QX, if you were to go into that editor app and adjust the curve on the mm -hmm. base, let's say you bumped it up, All right? right? You're expecting more base. There's a chance, very likely chance, that you're actually decreasing the base somewhere else. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Um, so I'm not sure how many people know that because a lot of so people don't. So that was don't. just with Multi QX. That's that what the editor auto? app. Okay. Because you have to keep in mind that Odyssey initially was just an auto calibration. Correct. There was no real way for you to go in there right. and change the curve until mm -hmm. the editor app came out. Right. And now you can start messing with the curves. But yeah, when you raise this, when you raise the base, because I, I noticed this too. I would raise the base and I'd go to measure afterwards. I'm like, That's not what I expected to right. happen. What, what, what what's happening here? Anyway. The new version of Multi QX fixes mm -hmm. that issue. And so hopefully I'll have someone from Odyssey on my channel to talk more about that in detail. Yeah. But um, yeah, it's something that that was an issue before. Now that it's resolved, I'm I'm not too sure why I would recommend a two by four HD unless you had more than two subs. Okay. Because you can do well, hold on a second. Okay, I know why. You still want it because <laughs> can you send I don't think you can set independent delays. I'm trying to I'm trying to remember what mm -hmm. Odyssey does. Right. What's the difference you know? between the two? I'm not sure that you can do uh independent delays for each sub. Yeah. I know that then, you can do levels. Mm -hmm. And you can you can't do individual EQ. That's another thing. So okay. with multi Q what with uh mini DSP you can set a separate EQ for one sub and a separate separate mm -hmm. EQ for the other sub. Right. And that might be handy if you're doing something like, you know, multi-sub optimization. Mm -hmm. um, so Xander did mention it. He just has the subs in the tower, so he doesn't have external subs. Okay. So does that does that make a difference? Because I don't even know how those are hooked up. Are they I think they're powered though, right? Like in the tower, yeah. it's yeah, powered. Plug it as if they yeah. were subs. Okay. See that part I don't I don't know how that integrates with that. Yeah. I oh, so See, this is why I like having you guys here. Reverend well, Slim says, says uh, you can separate delays but not separate EQ. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. So that would be the main difference. Uh, I would say try it first. Try it with multi QX. See if you're happy with the results. Yeah. You know, normally I would say just get them two by four HD, but I think with a new update, I can say try it first. Mm -hmm. If you already have it, if you have to yeah. buy it still now, yeah. I would still say buy it. I, I really like what Multi QX has done lately. Yeah, I'm trying to look at the, see if I can find the back. I don't see a rear picture of it. So maybe maybe it does have like an LFE input on the back. Mm -hmm. uh, reference Moon says his came with a handwritten post it note from China. Nice. There you go. All right. Um, yeah, if you guys have any questions also, we're going to try to answer as many as we can, mm -hmm. but sometimes it's hard because there's a lot coming through. So if you definitely 100% want one answered, then Super Chat is kind of a quick way to yeah, get our attention. It. You can drop like a buck or so. Um, but we will try to answer them regardless of whether you uh, drop the Super Chat or not. You know For what's sure. funny? Right now, I am uh, 
it's showing right now zero live viewers on StreamYard. Oh, really? So it's, yeah, it's kind of odd. I think they have an issue going on, but because I see people chatting, yeah, that would be weird. Yeah, they're here. Um, it's funny. I was on the Clips live stream the other day, and somehow we were streaming to mine and to their channel, mm -hmm. and we they went live. But I'm looking at mine. And everybody's like, "Hey, is it live?" I'm like, "Yeah, we're we've been talking for like five minutes." Oh, I'm like, I'm like hit your refresh, and they're like, "No, it's not live." And I'm like, "Oh crap." So there's so some kind of some yours? kind of delay. Yeah, well, I don't think it even went to theirs. It was like just delayed. So had a little huh. glitch there. So um, um let's see. Ripe wave says excited. Yeah, so um yeah, a lot of people are talking about the calibration toolkit. They're excited to get it. Uh yeah, hopefully everybody will start to get it soon. And if you do, make sure to tag us on Instagram or social. We want to see we want to see what you guys got, you know. And let us know how you're using it and if you find it useful. And if you have any questions, we have a Discord group specifically for that. Um, which reminds me, I actually did a, uh, a full calibration of my living room system. Mm -hmm. How'd that turn out? So I have those Audition T5s, those monolith Audition T5s. Right. That are I just reviewed. They're too hot, right? I told you the trouble was just too much on them. Sure. Man, with calibration, they sound... They sound so ridiculously good. Nice. Yeah, it's crazy how good they sound. Um, so I ran Dirac because I have a NAD T778, way overkill for those speakers. That's like, you know, the speakers are probably like, what, five? I don't know, like, I don't know, less than a thousand bucks for the yeah. left, center, and right. So the two sure. towers and a center channel, less than a thousand bucks. And the T778 is like 3,000 bucks. Mm -hmm. So overkill when it comes to that. Right. And yeah, Dirac does its thing when it comes to time alignment, phase alignment. I'm always amazed at what it can do. Yeah. But uh, I found that, you know, manually setting the target curves mm -hmm. to what I think is the correct target curve. Right. Or, yeah, I think it's the correct tar target curve. There you go. Makes a huge difference Nothing in the sound. That. Make it like what it sounded like to me. Mm -hmm. With the, the default recommendation from them, and you can change yeah. it, right? So you sure. can turn in the treble, you can turn up the bass, you know, you can do all that. But I don't yeah. know how many people do that, right? I think they, whatever it recommends, they hit send, and they're done. Yeah. Uh, but it sounded like if you've ever used the the what is it called, kind of like a restorer function on the Denon and Marantz, where it tries to make compressed music sound, I don't know, I guess less less. Compressed? Really? You haven't seen that feature? I've never, I know. I've never used that. I guess it's for like if you're listening to MP3 or like, uh, you know, bad content. It's supposed no, to I make don't, it. I don't do a whole lot of music listening. Mm. So it's it restores some of the highs. Right? Okay. It kind of sounded like that where it adds a little bit, a little bit of a you know sparkle or something, whatever the the terminology is. Right. It adds a little bit of that, and I'm like, oh, yeah. Huh. I don't know about no, that. I've never I've never even used that or seen that. Where would that be? Is it the, the restore, audio, the restore is function? Like I don't know. Settings? It's there somewhere. Like settings audio? Yeah. I, like I could think it'd be. Restore. Hmm. I never use that. Yeah. Yeah. I usually keep it on off anyway. Right. But yeah. Uh, I was able to use my manual uh, correction. Mm -hmm. So as you guys may know, and this is a plug for something that I'm working on. A lot of you guys said, man, you guys got to. You have to talk about stuff that you're working on. Yeah, I'm like, yeah, I know. I, I do have to do that. So I'm working on an app that is for room correction, and it works mm -hmm. with all the different room correction software, one of them being Dirac. Mm -hmm. And so we can import target curves into there. So you can design your own target curve or use somebody else's, right? Well, you can you can, design, you can design the target curve directly from Dirac. So that's right. not an – you can already do that. Okay. Right? Uh the software is meant to figure out what the target curve should be. Okay. Yeah. And so I was messing with that, doing some testing, you know, on the mobile version that we have. And I'm very excited because it works. You know right. what I mean? That The number one thing is it has to work and it yeah. has to, it has to be better. Right. Sure. So for a while we had some, some of the algorithms wrong mm -hmm. and I was testing. I'm like, Oh man, this doesn't right. sound better. Um, and then we figure, oh, no, we did something wrong here. Oh, okay, cool. But yeah, I'm amazed because it, it nice. really works and I'm excited and I can't wait for people to start trying it. 
Um, yeah. What, when are you yeah. shooting for roughly? What you, do you know, what I for? usually I usually shoot for something that's like unrealistic. No, I mean like when. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, are we talking a year? Are we like, talking two no, months? No, no, I'm talking are about talking... like. That's what I'm saying. Like when I'm shooting for like end of the month. Okay. So it'd be super soon. So you guys can look for that. Whether that'll actually happen, we'll have to we'll have to wait and see. But yeah, I'm gonna have I'm gonna have Tim maybe try it out. I want to try it on some various systems to see if it Big sounds box. good on all of them, right? Because it's one thing for me to try it on my one system. Yeah, sure. And it sounds great. But for somebody else, you know, I want somebody to be honest, like, yeah, I tried yeah. it, it's not good. I tried right. it. Oh, it's really good. Right. You know. So we have yeah, that's something testers. that is coming up. But yeah, those those speakers sound amazing. Nice. Now. And it's good that you can get still and, and I've always told people, I think I truly believe that everybody can have a, a great, you know, in my in my kind of space, home theater. You know, you love two channel as well, but I really think you can have a great home theater or two channel setup without having to like spend a ton, a ton of money. There's some great options out there, super affordable options that'll get you an amazing sound and it won't break the bank. You won't have to take out a loan. Now, there are speaker systems and amplifiers and processors that, you know, you can keep going up as high on the ladder as you want, spend as much money as you want, but you don't necessarily have to go that route and still get an amazing experience. All right. Uh, Bill Good man, man hit us up with a super chat. Thank you for the support. Uh, he says, what is you guys' next mm. home theater upgrade change and why? Hmm? Michael, you have any changes coming up? So mine I'm working towards upgrading. So I've had my clip system for forever, right? So I started my journey 15 years ago in this home theater. first home theater I've ever had. I've had surround sound systems before that, but they were in living room setups. And so I started off with some clips, RF83s with the RC64 center channel. Um, had a bunch of different surrounds, kept upgrading, upgrading, upgrading over time. But probably about, what, two years ago, reviewed the JTR Captivator RS2 subwoofers, blew me away, sold my um, PB16s, upgraded to the RS2s, told Jeff, I said, hey, I'd love to hear your, your main speaker someday. And he said, you know, we can make that happen. So he flew me up to Wisconsin. I had a chance to um, tour his headquarters. And then we went over to Tony's house. He had a full JTR system. Blew me away. Never heard anything like that. Went over to Scott Newby's house. Heard that set up. Incredible. Went over to Jeff's house. Heard a two-channel set up with his largest towers. Phenomenal deal there. So I'm like, this is I, I, this is like everything I love about Clips, but on a totally different level. Still had the horn load, um, sound dynamics clarity detail everything i love about that i like a more kind of forward sounding speaker um, but they definitely weren't bright by any means and uh, so i began to work towards that got the 212 hcrs up front been rocking that for at least a year and a half i guess and long term side i'm like okay one day i eventually want to start working on my surrounds and my atmos speakers so i'm in the process of doing that I'll be upgrading to the JTR 212 slants. I'm sorry, two, I'm sorry, I got it wrong. 110 slants is what they call it. So they're basically, I'll be replacing my in ceiling with on ceiling speakers. They've got an angled baffle on the front. Um, it's a coaxial driver. It's a 10 inch driver. And I think the, um, the tweeter inside it is, is it one and a half inch? Anyway, so it's kind of a big Atmos speaker. Same thing with the surround sounds. My room rod is 13 foot by 19 foot with 10 foot ceilings. So right. that's what I'm working on next. Oh, um, I guess I should answer. Next home theater. <laughs> okay. Uh, hmm. What, you know what? what? You I have a bunch of subs in for review. So I have three subs right now. They're all different subs. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, you can always use more. Three base. different brands. Oh, I have like a PB1000 Pro. I have mm -hmm. a, a Monolith uh, THX10. I have a right. SB3000. Right. I kind of like it because it's because it's so tricky. Yeah. It's good for me because I do a lot of calibration, you know, sure. for others. 
a lot of people I, a lot of people mix and match so you got to be used to figuring out how do these balance together exactly i mean one's sealed and one's ported and i mean two are ported so yeah they have different crossover it's not ideal and right. for that reason it's good for me you know what i'm saying because it i have to kind of figure sure. out different ways to make them sound cohesive yeah um but i have some of these i don't know if i showed this last time let's see here so i still have to test these but these are the elac vero okay so that's their is that their new series because i know they came out with some a couple of series i think right yeah they have like three different series these are yeah. the the um the more affordable ones and they have sure. some that are a little bit higher tier and then the they have one that significantly more ex expensive yeah. but um there's techno dead I think the, hi the higher ones don't they have dual yeah I they believe? have dual yeah. and they have the different surround it's crazy oh yeah surround. they got yeah you're right what's up what's up bro yeah. hey man um, but yeah so this is actually this one on the left is a 10 okay. middle is a 12 and this is a 15 nice so yeah sharp, i might add man. i might add subs, some more bro. subs i like those to the setup let's see um let me take this off this whoop I have that, and let's see. I showed you that huge box that I have. Mm -hmm. It's a. Uh, I have some new stuff from RSL also. Okay. Let me Got a lot of subs in there, huh? I know. That's, that's one of the brands. No, maybe I, I should do a, a little shootout. Let's I haven't see. heard of any RSL. I don't think you haven't. Hmm. Oh, no. by the way, somebody any asked systems. for a quick sneak peek. Uh, oh, that's the Speedwoofer. Okay. Speed, I've heard of the speed speed yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you hear that? Let's I, just, see here. I just haven't heard it at all. What happened? Eh? Yeah. This is... Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's some that's some very rough stuff right there. It's just uh don't don't look at the way that that looks. <laughs> uh it's just testing the C functionality. Don't quote him on that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um <laughs> Hold on, let me bring up that RSL. Mm. Sorry yeah, for my not... tardiness. I got a last minute uh, appointment at physical therapy for my ankle, so I just mm -hmm. nice. How's that healing, man? <sighs> not as good I as you want. I saw you. What, why did you? Why you have the boot all of a sudden? You oh, because I, I went to the doctor, it. and doctor wanted me in the boot for like another mm -hmm. six weeks. Yeah, oh. thanks. So, nice, thanks, bro. Villa yeah. man's in here, by the way. Let's say what if you I saw him. What's up, Cleveland? How you doing? Uh, I see you were making videos again, man. It's good to see you. Did you have a... Well, not you, but did you guys have a kid? Is that what happened? Um, is that where you were gone? I think I saw something <laughs> on Facebook. Maybe it's your kid, somebody else's kid. I don't know. I don't know. But So, um, oh, check this out. Yep. So this is the RSL. Oh. It says, experience the new Speedwolfer 12S. Mm -hmm. So the the 10s is a small sub that's right. that was very affordable, super compact, and so I actually have that in for review, mm -hmm. and I was you know it was just small 10 and supposedly it could get down to 20 hertz. I mean that's yeah. the secret, you know. I needed to get down to 20 hertz, um, but yeah, this mm -hmm. is I guess a new one that they have coming out. It looks pretty decent. It's a big boy though, right? Yeah. So that's a 12. You can look at the enclosure. You're right, it looks yeah, like it's much small. It's it's almost like uh, what is it um, like a mono mono price <laughs> so for just huge. Oh, this, <laughs> this is good marketing right here. These guys are direct, right? Um, so 15 inch performance, 12 inch accuracy, 10 inch price. Oh, <laughs> that's that. good. I 10 like inch that. Price. That's good. That's good marketing. See, look right at that there. thing. Wow. You know, a 22 inch, 23 inches tall. Damn. You think it would have like a lot more output though because of the bigger cabinet, right? I usually, yeah, usually so maybe some deeper extension 16 hertz anechoic. Yeah, uh, it looks nice. like it's going to handle some business. So, yeah. yeah. So, to answer your question, uh, what's the price on that one? It says here, is there a price? I don't uh, see more, maybe. C I think more. I saw somewhere like $7.99 or something okay. like that. I don't know. Okay, Very I cool. might be completely wrong with that. Well, Let's here see. on Google, it says $7.99. Yeah. Okay, pretty so. affordable, absolutely. Yeah. So nice. yes, yes, yes. Um, but yeah, that that that's a big boy. Mm -hmm. a big boy boss. Yeah, Cleveland said he has a new boss baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Boss baby. Yeah, yeah new boss baby. Congratulations, uh, congratulations. Man. That's super cool. That's awesome. Yeah, congrats, no, no. Man. That's, that's I re, probably I why. Out, 
Go ahead. I was going to say, I reached out to him a while back. I'm like, hey, man, I'm just checking to see if you're okay. He's like, oh, <laughs> yeah, man, we're good. Because sometimes, you know, content creators, they, they start off strong and they're going good. And then they just, whoop, they just disappear. You're like, what happened, man? Sometimes yeah. it's, you know, sickness in the family or, you know, life happens. And so yeah, he left. He still has more subscribers than me, you know? <laughs> his, his channel's growing faster than mine. And he's been gone, not making yeah, any videos. Yeah, bro. He's got that sexy voice, voice, though, dude. Yeah, I know. You can't compete with that, Joe. Dude, well, it's, got, every got, time anyone watches a video, your sub his his video the sub is totally just lower activate, and lower, right? Yeah. You know, oh, um, it's funny. And, and then uh, you know, I, I guess the new TVs are starting to come out. Um, so he'll he'll have he'll have more videos coming out. I would imagine. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. He started doing a lot of TVs for a while. Mm -hmm. All oh right. yeah. Thank you, Jason Fuller, for the super chat. If you have a question that goes along with that. Yeah, drop yeah, it in might have let's, Yeah, it. let's check out High Finest. Did you toss this one up here yet? Oh, yeah. No? no, that one we haven't. Okay. So, Jason, okay. if you have a question. Yeah, let us know. Thank Jason. you, High Finest, for the $10 super chat. Yes, uh, listening to Atmos Music right now, toggling between dynamic EQ on or off, mm -hmm. boosting subs about 6 dB with dynamic EQ off. Mm -hmm. Current volume is 30 below reference. That's subs are about 10 dB hot plus 8 dB boost uh hq hq i'm not sure how about you guys all right so basically he's asking about our settings right yeah yeah i i, I mean atmos music if it, you're playing it off of like title off of an apple tv i mean anything off of apple tv dude we need a like a 40 db boost <laughs> like like it's really low really pretty, really low. anemic oh yeah. he said hq's house curve oh, house curve house curve oh i've never seen it at hq okay yeah. I'm like headquarters. Uh, he's, fa he's fancy, man. See, I know. A hot quarter. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what's happening. All right. Uh, so, eight dB. Okay, so subs are ten dB hot plus yeah. eight dB boost to the house, house curve. curve. So he's raising everything up. Hmm. Eight dB right. and and he's doing like a lot of bass going on. Yeah, there. yeah <laughs> dude. Exactly. I don't run mine like I mean. I typically, I mean, I'm running maybe, I don't know, like six to seven, maybe eight dB hot. So, mm. But that's just a lower that's frequency. 18. I'm, I'm mean, not boosting everything. Yeah. It, it, I'm not sure if he means also that typically the LFE channel, right, has a 10 dB difference. I don't know if that's what you mean. <laughs> you guys are <laughs> having some funny stuff in the comments. So just... <laughs> I love that. Head covering. <laughs> What? Um, um, haute couture. So <laughs> let's start making stuff up. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I, I'd, I'd say it's I'd say it's pretty difficult. Um, I finally oh so Joe, remember how um I got that new Dolby Atmos thing? Mm -hmm. So I was able to get a good level, not at zero, so like negative five. Oh yeah 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 yeah. But it's still it's still um. <clears throat> High finest. That's I think it's pretty tough, dude. Any kind of Atmos music, unless you're playing it from a disc or or a file, you're gonna have to like, you know, jack up the volume. That seems pretty um, steep, though. And I know your system isn't like a slouchy system. You got he's got, got capable B and, subs. B, yeah, B and Ws, all kinds of stuff. Nice. <clears throat> yeah. So uh, dynamic EQ. I turn all that off personally. If you're asking what I use. Uh, I don't use dynamic EQ. Um, I haven't he said used he's got eight, EQ. He said he's got an 8 dB boost in the house curve. Starting Sub gain is calibrated to 83. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Well, I feel like I feel like I I need to give you a good answer for that super chat. So, um, truthfully, I think it's it's hard to tell. Like, it doesn't matter. Uh, how we have our settings because it's going to depend on our speakers in our room and your room is going to make a big impact on that too. Yeah. It's just, just from doing <laughs> enough calibrations though. I mean, it sounds like it's pretty hot. Like you got the base up pretty, pretty hot and it might sound great to you. So I can't that's say whether that's right or wrong. Even, you know, it could mean that, I mean, it could be the correct amount. Um, You know, it's really tough to tell if you have some measurements that would be useful. Also, if you want to email, mm -hmm some measurements yeah. there might be something i can look at a little bit better through an email right so i think you can e email what info 
at Daily Hi-Fi, info at dailyhifi.com. So yeah, if you don't mind doing that, maybe I can take a look and see. Because at the end of the day, it just matters how they measure. And then if it sounds good to you. Yeah, for sure. There's Jason's uh, super chat question. All right. With another super chat. Thank you. Yeah. Appreciate uh, it. Bubble. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So he says, uh, Jason says, my SBS subs never go into standby when plugged into mini DSP 2x4 HD. Hmm. Do you guys know hmm. how to put the mini into standby or is that even possible? Yeah, I don't know. I think my mini DSP stays on all the time. I don't know. If the, I don't think there's a setting in there that you can disable that. So is yeah. that is that basically saying? I mean, I guess my first question is: if you're not you do, using the mini DSP, do the subs go into standby, or if you just unplug them for a while? As far as like the RCA cable going into them, they should go to sleep. XLR. Actually, right? I'm if they if they don't, then that's the sub. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I'm wondering if you're getting any noise coming in through there. That's you caught know, that's like keeping always. It awake. Mm, interesting. Yeah. You know, is, is your gain real high? Because you should be able to, uh, they should go into standby. Mm -hmm. Because it's not like, you know, it, I think it goes by signal level. If there's a certain amount of signal coming in through the RCA, then it says, hey, wake up, you know. Mm, yeah, I, th I think that's kind of odd. I don't see why it shouldn't uh, go to sleep. So yeah, check that. Check to see that your gains aren't too high, and that you know if you go into the mini DSP app, you shouldn't see any anything coming through if you don't have any signal coming through, right? If you see that thing like like you know something going up and down, that means we have some noise coming Just in. Dancing around, yeah. He said yeah. when the RCA pl is plugged in directly, the subs do sleep. Mm. Mm. Yeah, let us know. Does, is that something that you see in the mini DSP app? Do you see the actual bars moving at all? Or does it look completely blank? Like yeah. it's not Rev working. Reverend agree agrees with you. He's saying that you know, in the mini DSP, if your trims are high, it's uh, maybe uh, it may be feeding enough voltage to the SVS to keep it from sleeping. Yeah, and if that is the case, then what you want to do is change where the gain is increased. Of course, you don't want to get digital clipping, right? Mm -hmm. But preferably, what you want to do is increase the gain from, On let's say, whatever itself. the source is. Right, so let's say you if you have your uh, gain on your uh, AVR to minus twelve, mm -hmm. right, and it might need to be at minus twelve depending on your other speakers, right? Mm -hmm. um, but let's just say that's at minus twelve, but it doesn't have to be, and then you have your mini DSP at plus twelve. You see what I'm saying? It's better right. to to kind of balance that out and maybe increase the, the AVR to zero, and then not have to boost on the mini DSP. So play around with those settings, but I don't see why it would not fall asleep. Yeah. Oh, um, by the way, mm -hmm. um, speaking of subwoofers going to sleep when they shouldn't be, they should be mm -hmm. wide awake. Uh, if you're using the spatial audio calibration toolkit, some people have said, hey, I played the call out section and my subwoofer was didn't play when the subwoofer was playing. But when they played it in a different section, the subwoofer was playing. Mm -hmm. You know what that is? That's auto working because there's no signal going to the subwoofer and then all of a sudden it says lfe and it plays that pink noise for in the lfe and the lfe is not on so if you're ever using the spatial audio calibration toolkit just set your subwoofer to on if you're dealing with anything with the subwoofer kind of wake it up manually yeah right right otherwise it's just going to be like you're you're like going to be <laughs> i like i tell the guy emailed me i was like oh just set your sub to on when you're using the toolkit Otherwise, it sounds to me like it's just there's no signal in there. Auto is not detecting anything. And then and then for the other test that you're running, it's on. Mm -hmm. um, so that's just, yeah. <clears throat> One of those things. By the way, I, I dropped off 500-ish uh, packages <laughs> today oh, at yeah. the uh, post office. I took I some footage and... Uh, <laughs> Because it was like 25 degrees. The storm had just like broken. We just finally got uh, some sunlight out of this uh this whole uh weekend um and yeah we just kind of stayed we just stayed in and, and how'd you uh, enjoy doing the you know the whatever how many you had to do did you enjoy that whole process or what i mean i just sat there 
Like I didn't like luckily I didn't have to DJ because they this is the first time in 12 years they closed a lodge due to hmm. the incoming snow. Right. That's that just means y'all had some crazy snow though. Dude, Mike, we got the most snow on the planet. Yeah. Mike, yeah. like you gotta wow. get over here, bro. <laughs> on the you 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 passionate Dude, about ski, snowboarding, I'm, whatever. I'm flying you out got, in two days. You gotta you gotta come out here. That Mam way. Mammoth Mountain is the place. Well, no, don't come in two days. We got another yeah. atmospheric river event happening. So we're no, still we're, gonna we're get them like Vermont. another eight feet or something like that this week yeah, something ridiculous awesome. um getting worried about my house because this whole side mm -hmm. there's just they're just packing up the snow like yeah, it's, yeah. it's getting it's getting pretty wild um and i did catch one of the snow plows today since i was videotaping like my drive and doing all this stuff with dropping off the packages there's this there's this move that they call the peel and so they put the sled or the thing um mm -hmm. down on the ground and it and they're moving to where the two front wheels are off the ground of the big bulldozer. And they're on the street. Moving. <laughs> moving. Yeah, moving, moving down the street. And I'm driving right, like, coming right up on him. I saw the videotape the whole thing. Oh, man, it was cool looking and scary at the same time. Yeah. You um, that thing to hit so the you, wheels man. off the ground. Is it kind of like when the dogs walk? To when they when their butts itchy and they they kind of do that like little walk where they scratch their butt on the ground. I, I don't know Something what like you're that. talking about there, bro. I don't know you don't. You're the one either. with the dogs, bro. Oh, I know. Oh, they do, the, oh, they they do, the, do the, the little booty, the, little, the, the, the little, booty walk, <laughs> the booty walk. Yeah, the booty scratch. No, this is. Uh, uh, I wonder if I could. Oh, here. That's what I'm picturing let's in my mind. Let's see if if the camera will. Yeah, we can see it. Okay, yeah, let's see. All right, here, here, here. Uh, hold on, let me. I got you. I got you. I got you. Yeah, yeah, do that. Oh, I pressed the wrong button. All right. Right. See this? Okay. Mm -hmm. So the wheels are off the ground. Oh, yeah, see? Oh, check Ooh, it out. Look at that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, like, no, I'm driving yeah, right next dude. to him, like, boom. Hey. You got He's it, just man. flexing on you, bro. Job, dude. He's, He's just flexing. Job. He's just flexing. That was yes. a, that has nothing to do with snow. Dude, He's just like, hey, there's Techno Dad. Techno Dad's taping. I'm going to be on the video. Oh, man. Yeah, it's some crazy stuff, man. This This is an everyday thing. And it's funny when uh, they're moving around the room, yeah. Um, when like places like New York gets like two inches of snow, the whole town, yeah. the whole city's done, right? Yeah. Because they don't have um, like these big bulldozers ready sure. to go. Um, That's crazy. And yeah. So we see this all. Yeah. Time. When I lived um, in Alabama, anytime there was any kind of snow, I mean, you could talk about a quarter of an inch, man. They just everybody shuts down. Everybody. Like, like, oh, we, we, we don't have. We don't have anything to. To combat that, there's no salt. Mm -hmm. There's no nothing. You just over here, if you it. get any snow, any snow yeah. whatsoever, everybody stops working. They, everybody yeah. goes out into the street. They make a little <laughs> yeah. tiny, like a little baby snowball. Like, yeah, oh. yeah, right. It's, it's a red they start day. taking Instagram awesome photos. Fun. Yeah, right. Oh my god, there's no one. Yeah, that's on. Um, uh, Villa Man says that's a lot of LFE. Yeah, you know. Um, oh, hey, Cleveland. I should send you one of our discs, man. Um, and you know check it out um but i was manually calibrating in here the system in here and the system upstairs and i think uh 82 is kind of like my my uh where i where i like to have the base mm. you know, it, it, it like 75 was just like we discussed the other time 75 just no there's no base at all um but uh yeah so that's yeah. another thing uh i guess we can discuss another time about how to use a toolkit i think i think we have to make a video everybody keeps asking how do we use this thing? Just different things to look out for, you know. So we'll yeah. have to to do that because it's tricky, you know. Even for me, sometimes I'm like, oh, how how is this set up? Like for the tonality test, I have to ask you: Is the LFE on? You're like, nope. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So, um, uh, uh, Arturo, my 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 leg is this is still the thing that I like. I I, I had Achilles reconstruction surgery 2021, and everything was fine until like two Saturdays ago, I was walking the dogs and they love the snow and they're jumping around and running and there's snows all lumpy. So I was just running behind them. And so like that, you know, uneven surface kind of tweaked my ankle and it's been aggravated ever since. That's all. I can still walk. It's all good. Uh, Joe Chan, I got my spatial toolkit today. Finished my Amos installation this weekend, so looking forward to checking it out. The sticky note was a nice touch. Techno Dad, thank hey, all good, man. My I went through a full on Sharpie, brand new Sharpie, <laughs> done <laughs> like 300 of, the, of those little notes. Um, 
Yeah. Oh, so, wow, we got some more Super Chats here. Yeah, so real quick, this one's been here for a while. Arturo asks, I have a question. Who sets the standards? Audio department, uh, Dolby T DTS, or Oro 3D? Audio standards? St uh, I'm not sure what, what he means exactly. I yeah. don't know, but um, aren't, aren't THX standards, like, pretty, like, don't everybody use that um like quite a bit like 80 hertz for your crossover um didn't we use like some thx specs in our yeah. level matching like well, our it's... band limiting level match stuff and stuff so like that? uh yeah i think reverend slim is probably correct the itu but um itu yeah yeah thx um i guess one of the or original founders of odyssey was you know from thx also or you know the thx guy so mm -hmm. a lot of that stuff went into odyssey so it's kind of like whatever's popular i think also becomes a standard right so it doesn't mm -hmm. have to be an official standard if it's the popular thing that can also mean something um but yeah i think it's the itu whatever that stands for yeah. <laughs> so like itu <laughs> there's a the itu standard for, for 5.1 7.1 yeah, right 5.1 yeah. that's a layout that you know they look at all these uh the angles the research they look at the papers and they yeah there you go randall knows see that's what i like you guys know the answers here yeah yep thomason holman yeah th right there um yeah tim also knows uh yeah. smpte simpty yeah. simpty that's a time simpty. code yeah i remember that's that time code. do they yeah. also do video stuff too that, that's yeah, like it's for video thing. and yeah, yeah, it's time code, simpty time code. Like if mm -hmm. we wanted to remember Joe when we were at CES and we we're like, oh, you know, we had like two different audio recorders, two different cameras. Mm -hmm. If we had like the simpty time code across them all, we could oh, uh, yeah, yeah, line yeah. it all up. Um, that's what they. That's your issue. At least that's more your. You you should have had that. Yeah, I didn't. I don't have that. <laughs> we took yeah, all that video. Joe, you never made the video. Remember clap. that? Because it was just too much. <laughs> yeah, it was too like, way too hard it. to like do all that. Yeah, it was it was lame. But you know, whatever. <laughs> it's, it, was, like it was better just hanging out, out with out Joe. Car, and now you're done. I yeah. forget that. Yeah. Um, here's another at the super chat. Thank you, Andrew. Hey guys, I have five in-ceiling speakers that home builder set to be a part of a 5.1 with three up front and two flanking couch. Using four is at most aimed at MLP. Any benefit to moving to spec locations or swap to SA, SA Heights? I don't know what that is. I don't know. SA. Let me read this. Sorry. I was looking. So I'll read it silently. Three you, guys can talk. you guys can talk. You yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to figure it. Because at Let's first SA. I thought he was saying they had a five. Because sometimes builders will put like all in ceiling speakers. Yeah, I think that's what he's saying. Is, is that's not a, a that's great, what he's saying. Yeah. 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 They did that in Florida a lot, right? Yeah. I've seen them and I'm like, what are y'all doing? I mean, I mean, there's there's nothing accurate about having your front LCR firing straight down. Even if you can angle, angle it towards them, you, it's still, not, yeah, it's it's still weird because it's, you know, like in my room, I'm, I got 10 foot ceilings, you know, so you've got yeah. sound happening 10 foot above you when it should be happening right in front of you. So I, ideally, I would say I would love for you to move those down and put them in some bookshelf speakers or towers and center. Or, yeah, no, I, I think we, he's he's saying any benefit of moving like the two front ones 100%. Cl closer, right? To the, yeah. to the main yeah, list. Yeah, you can position. bring those down because ideally you want to have those at like your tweeter around ear level. So they're nowhere near. No, no, no. My, Mike, Mike, Mike. I think I what he's saying is though. he's taking the two heights that are up in the front and mm -hmm. moving them to the main listening position as heights. He's using them as heights. Okay. Right? So Whatever's in not, the ceiling. Okay. Right. He's not, he's not talking. I'm, yeah. He, he already has I'm, speakers on the ground, I think. Okay. I okay. think is what's happening. Right. Uh, I guess the other question that. is do are they angled? Because that helps a little bit, right? Yeah. yeah, the fact that they're angled. He does Don't mention that. How much? Yeah, that helps. Okay. Using four as at, okay, so he all right. I see it. I misunderstood that. He said he's using four as at most. Right. Aimed at main lensing position. Yeah. Aimed. Okay, so aimed sounds mm -hmm. like they have some way to like angle angled, angled tweeter mid range. Mm -hmm. To moving the spec locations or swap to what's S A H T S? I, I don't know what S A is, but I mean, I maybe standard. Heights? Are we just guessing? Like, what yeah, are yeah. Are they? SA heights. Andrew, give us some more context, man. What, what is an SA height? Is that, <laughs> a uh, height. I'm not sure what that is. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what an SA height is. Yeah, what's oh, up, SA? Go. 
That's what I was gonna say. I say that's my hearts in the house. Uh, yeah. So if you can clarify that, we can maybe help out a little yeah. bit more. Yeah. Uh, Kyle, thank you for the super chat. Got a great deal on Martin Logan Dynamo sixteen hundred. Now looking for options for a second sub. Do I get another? Go up to the balance force or a different brand? So that must be like a higher tier. The balance the, force. I, I suppose uh, of the Martin Logan sixteen hundred. Yeah, I think I had that one in for review, Dynamo 1600X or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, I had that one in for review. I'm pretty sure. So it's a $2,000 sub. We're talking goes down to 20 hertz, so that's good. A 900-watt continuous amp, 1800-watt peak, 15-inch. I mean, if, if you wanted to add another subwoofer, it would be ideal to get the same one. Um, What's the other one? He mentions balance. oh real balance quick. force what is that oh this is balance. so sa means this right here what is it? <laughs> according to um, reverence limb or crappy uh, oro heights yeah <laughs> but with it okay yeah with it yeah. sorry sorry i have to get to that Ooh, where were we now big, all right so that's a big jump in price for one thing so the other sub the balance force is forty five hundred dollars so double. Two. So it's using it's using dual, is dual, it dual opposing, opposing maybe. That's what Kanga's saying over here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Looks like I want to see what the response is. I'm going down. Nicer finish. It looks really nice. XLR input. So that's good. Um, uh, where is man? They got a lot of mumbo jumbo on this page, and I did not mumbo, see. This. I know. Yeah. I mean, some, it's just like some so of them are just like, what's going on? Yeah. Do, do a lot uh, of people get Martin Logan subs? I don't know. I don't hear a lot of people using them. I mean, ah, maybe I had one. It. I thought it was, you know, it worked. They're pretty so good. I, I'm not like okay, like <laughs> go, going to going to go grab like five more and stash them it in. Just here. So you know, I don't know. I haven't I'm, heard too much about them. I'm not saying they're yeah. good or bad. It's just no. uh, I don't see a lot of people buying them. Okay, so these go down to 18 hertz. The other ones are 20. So you're not getting a lot more lower in extension. I think. I mean, my question is, is, do you like the performance of your current sub? I mean, is there something that it's doing that you feel that you need more of? You know, if you add an identical sub, you're going to gain, what, 6 dB in volume because you're doubling your amplifier and you're doubling the the actual um, surface area. So you're going to get more output. Yeah. Yeah. Mia says I wouldn't mix a 16 with a balance for it's really different sound design. Okay. Yeah. So I haven't heard either one. He said keep it the same, uh, get two sixteen hundreds. Yeah. <clears throat> That's the safe bet. If you're mm-hmm. not using anything like mini DSP and stuff like that, then you know mm-hmm. it's gonna be harder for those to gel because yeah. that's really what you want. You want both subwoofers to gel. So it's easier if it's it's the same thing. Yeah. That's it. That's a Got it for almost half the price. Okay. We got a good deal on it. And yeah. dude, if you can get another one for half price and hey, get four of them, man. I mean, get four of them. <laughs> get four of them. <laughs> Seriously, dude. He could if he got them for half price, he can get four of those. Would that work out? Yeah, because he's getting them a thousand a piece. You get four of those for uh the price of one of those balance for. So I like it, man. Yeah. Damn, like damn you're, you're you're making me I'm I'm working on my uh network attached storage video and like setting right. all this up and I'm like you're like get it get another two I get four of them I'm like man I should just get another hard drive <laughs> like I'm like they're still 40% off yeah. yeah um we got another super chat from Randall here Oh, see that? Thanks yeah. for the quick shipment of the disc. Hey, I appreciate it, man. No problem. Thank you guys uh, for for all the pre-orders. I like. I don't know if he's serious or he's joking because you know you guys pre-ordered, so it took like three <laughs> months <laughs> to get here. So sorry. Well, once once being they a little arrive, sarcastic. Though. No, but, I think you know, he's saying once they arrive, man, you jumped on yeah. it. I, 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 I that is true. You drove out to go and pick them up because they were going to take two weeks longer. Couple, couple. Yeah, they were going to take two more weeks to yeah. get here on their own. Uh, so, so yeah, I drove down there. Like I got off work at 7 a.m., came home, went to the did some stuff, walked the dogs. It was like yeah. 8:15. Sasha comes comes back uh, or from the gym, and she, then um, I get a call at 8:30. 
uh, a.m. from UPS. I'm like, I'm going like I was there like 930 because it's like 40, about 40 miles away. Right. And then with the snow, because it was snowing here. I, you know, it was like 25 miles yeah. an hour for, for and, you're, and you're walking uphill both ways. So that yeah. added some, yeah. Well, yeah, sometimes <laughs> walked on ice to get us the discs. <laughs> Randall uh, actually is also, he's always supportive. Like that. I see yeah. Randall comes in with a super chat. So let's just, I just wanted to let you guys know, uh, Randall, thank you for your support always. Right. So he's always supporting in, in various, he's, he's been one of really, our OGs too. He's been yeah. here for a long time. But truthfully, yep. it does help us do the things that we do, right? All of it kind of adds up. It allows us to have Tim edit the videos. And because we have daily hi-fi, it helps us when we have a new product. And, you know, uh, a lot of times we meet people here, Reverend Slim, we met here. So it all kind of works together. And just allowing us to do this is, you know, it's really a great thing. So thank you, guys. Uh, Jason asked, where can you buy the calibration discs? It's uh, spatialcd.com. Oh, I totally spelled that wrong. <laughs> <That's>... <laughs> Thank you, Ike. Ike. Ike was in there with the link. That's hilarious. Um, but yeah, yeah, you should see it. So I took footage of, you know, me loading the car. And so there's yep. snow all over the place. It actually looks real pretty uh, this morning. And it was like 25 degrees, but it warmed up. It's like 45 now. And just like snow's melting, we're starting to get like little rivers coming down. It's it's, it's getting getting kind of hairy. Um, but yeah, yes, what Kanga? Yeah, so I sent a picture, a video to Kanga. I walk outside my house, my front door, and there's this huge pile of snow. Like I can't even, I couldn't even put it in the video. Like it's so high, like you can't even. Um, you can't see the top of it. It's crazy. I think it's funny that you still call him Kanga. It's like, oh, sorry, <laughs> Siphonics. <laughs> Siphonics. Well, you have to audio. be old school to understand why he's calling him that. Yeah. So, yeah. That's kind of funny. Big hello from the Netherlands. What's going on, Poncho? How are you doing? Um, Kanga, I'd like you to meet GoPro Youth Man. Oh, mercy. Yeah. He's yeah. an OG too, if he says that. Yeah, that guy. Mm hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, so uh, Bodhi, it will definitely get you the PDF. It's just a matter of sending you a link. So, yeah, and then there's also a link to the PDF in the disc insert, mm -hmm. along yeah. with the link to the Discord. Yeah. It's all there. It, it's actually an online document, so we can change it. Yeah, it yeah. started out as five pages. Joe made it 15, then 22, then it started adding photos. It's like at 26 now. Um, so it just keeps getting bigger and bigger. Yeah. Just like my credit card balance. Hey -oh! <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, oh, by the way, check this out. Did you guys see this? What's up? Boom. Look at that. Oh. SG Joe. SG Joe. Mm -hmm. Should I open mine? That's your Apple ones, right? Yeah. 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 These are pretty cool. So this is, of course, for uh, testing out different mixes with the airpods max you know we want to make sure that it sounds good on everything so i got the blue ones you got the blue ones oh yeah adventurous I looks like here's the blue joe the these the are gray. This is okay. the gray yeah look blue in the on the picture yeah and Those you know what I, one thing i want to say is i thought that these were just gonna pair automatically when you, you know with the apple tv mm -hmm. like because you know i have a, a macbook pro i have an ipad and, you know, supposedly you sign in with your Apple ID on one, you know, connect these on one. And then mm -hmm. supposedly it's supposed to find it on the other ones. Doesn't it didn't find it mm -hmm. automatically on my Apple TV. I had to manually pair it. I'm like, isn't that the whole point of the, you know, special chip in here and everything? Here anyway, live unboxing. Boom. boom. Oh, those look pretty cool. Hey, some more. Yours, yours doesn't say SG China. It's, how come it says CEO right there? Why, why, why you got a CEO? How come you got flex? Where is, where is it? <laughs> I actually haven't where seen it. There it is. Say? There it is. It says the same thing. I can't even. Okay. This is probably yeah. way too tiny. Oh, crap. This is small. I know, yeah. right? You I saw it. No I way. I don't even think. No, the way. Yeah. no way. Yeah, no, no way. I don't see it. No way. Oh, right. It's right there. <clears throat> My face uh, is uh, in the way. Uh, why are you shaking? There, there, there. Okay. There. I see some a little bit. It says S there, it is. there we go. SG oh, Gun. Not, not bad. 
Wait, did they smell my name wrong? No, I just no. That'd be rough. <laughs> so yeah, that's cool. Something cool to play with. These are, you know, super handy. Have you tried it with uh, your Apple TV though? You should try it dude, with your Apple TV. Dude, I just I literally just opened the box, man. Oh, I guess you had AirPods Pro. The same kind of same yeah. deal. No, um, my wife has my AirPods Pro because hers mm, broke. Mm. Or something like that. But look, now my phone's like, hey, you gotta um pair it. Okay. Oh, that's done. Hey, that was quick. Yeah. Um, yeah, so basically with these, uh, because Joe Joe had a great idea. He's like, hey, you can make your your music mixes specifically tailored for mm -hmm. um apple products so so my next um atmos mix um for like home theater and stuff i'm gonna offer a file I, first i gotta figure out how to deliver a file like that um but you know if i can figure out how to you know uh send you guys dolby true hd D content i'm sure i can be able to find some like headphone stuff how to yeah. deliver that but yeah, uh, Mark Wilson says any updates on the app? Uh, yeah, we did mention that a little bit earlier. Um, I got to make it look at least presentable. You know, I don't really want to show too much because it's just in a state right now where we just want to test functioning functionality. Yeah, yeah we want to make yeah. sure it works and work it, worry about making it look nice right. later. But you know, you don't really want to show that off. He'll work on the packaging later. Yeah, exactly. Once it's exactly. Yeah, it, look, it looks it looks like um, you know, it looks like uh any kind of pioneer. I mean, uh <laughs> um graphic user interface That's from funny. the 90s. I mean, it uh, looks like that, right? Um, IQEQ, uh, uh, oh, like the Yamaha. Yeah, you know. It's, it's like a house, you know, you see you see the frame come up and it doesn't look like anything yet and then all of a sudden they put the walls like, "Whoa." Dang. All right. Yeah, right. Yeah, we got we got a roof. You need on the that. foundation. You, you need that. The uh, what else we got here? Uh, Scott asks, what? Oh, with Jirac Art, chat. can you mix subs of different capability? For example, one large sub for low hertz, three small to cancel the room modes. Have you tested it? Mm -hmm. I mean, um, Scott, that was Scott. Hey, Scott, yeah. um, I don't know about with Jirac Art, but like we do that. Um, my, uh, my sound guy would do that uh, when I do live stuff. He'd have the 18s for like anything below 30, and then he have the 15s for like 30 to like 200, and he have mm -hmm. the 12s to go from 200 to like 600 or something like that, or 500. Um, <laughs> I don't know if you want to do that in a home theater, but Paul, oh, yeah, you said Yamaha. I'm listening now. I saw that. Yeah, <laughs> he's cracking me up. So yeah, uh, to answer that question, can you mix subs? Yeah, I think I think Dirac does a pretty good job when it comes to phase aligning uh, subwoofers. The only issue that you might have is that they're not really testing to see the distortion limits. They're not testing, maxing out your sub. And, you know, let's say if one is way more capable than the other sub, it doesn't really know, right? So. Uh, oh, my God. You got you to gotta always, you know, when they say trust but verify. So let it do its thing. But listen, and if you hear anything weird, you might have to go in there and manually not allow the sub to go as <laughs> low but yeah it's possible if you think about the way Derek art works it doesn't even care if it's a sub a speaker you know it'll allow speakers to support other channels also so it doesn't necessarily have to be a sub but yeah oh uh, what else we got here um uh villa man was saying that his uh airpods or airpods pair yeah, automatically, automatically. Yeah, you know, it's funny because I have two Apple TVs. The one in the bedroom, it just wouldn't do it. I had to manually do it. The one in the living room, same model. I don't think it's a newer one at all. Mm -hmm. You know, I just, I turned it on. It's like, hey, I found you. I see like, it. What the, what he, says, he says there's always a pop-up asking me to press the TV button to pair. Yeah, that I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about even just getting it to pair. I had to pair it like a Bluetooth speaker, you know, like, or a Bluetooth headphone mm -hmm. where you have to hold the button and then it finds it and then you choose it. But I'm like, isn't that the whole point of these things? They're expensive because you shouldn't have to do that. I'm like, yeah. Uh, anyway. I mean, um, today while I was, uh, working on my, uh, a couple of things, mm -hmm. Sasha's yelling at me from the, I'm, I'm in the dining table. She's in the bedroom. She's like, this Apple TV sucks. <laughs> Because she's so frustrated with it. 
and the fast forwarding it's just and the rewinding the one in the bedroom is like the oldest one we have so it's official i am replacing that with an, a roku ultra another one i picked up a new uh, roku, roku ultra it's actually been here for months i just haven't <laughs> installed it and i'm just like waiting and waiting but she's like i you need to change this it sucks <laughs> I'm like, okay. <laughs> What's wrong with the fast forwarding? You don't the like the. Is, like it the just touch. doesn't work. It it's so finicky. It doesn't work. No, we actually have a but a remote with actual buttons, mm -hmm. and it just it'll like hang. The Apple TV just hangs. You hit rewind and it just hangs and it doesn't do anything, or fast yeah. forward and it hangs and it doesn't do anything. So you don't use their actual remote? No, oh, no, see, that thing. Your fault. That thing is that. Got to use that thing's even worse. Are you kidding me? That thing's even worse. <laughs> At least the newer Apple TV. Um, that that new remote has like actual buttons, mm -hmm. but um, oh, so you had the one that was like a like a little touchpad? Yeah, that's that's that one. Yeah, oh, yeah, that that shit sucks ass. Oh dude. yeah, Come that's on, probably man. not so good. Yeah, 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 I probably have to agree. It sucks, <laughs> sucks. But uh, oh. no, the new one is both. It's a it's a, yeah, it's it this. Is. It is. It's like you guys are showing. Yeah, that guy. Yeah, it's that guy. You know where it looks like buttons, but then you this is actually like touch sensitive also. Yeah. Which I usually turn off. Uh, I realize that it works well if you have a TV with very low latency. But if you're trying it on a projector system, oh, man, it feels weird. Mm. Yeah, so so we're moving away from the Apple TV. It's a shame. It's a shame because, you know, if you're not using the NVIDIA Shield, Apple TV is probably your best bet for, like, Atmos and stuff like that. But if it's in the bedroom, not a big deal. I, mean, right? I don't have an Atmos set up in my bedroom. Mm. Well, uh, this yeah. is oh, nine billion or speaker. Thank you again for the super chat. Uh, Sorry if we have oh, um, thank you, Andrew, for another super chat. Uh, have nine bed layer speakers using the four of five in ceiling mm -hmm. as Atmos. That's what he was talking about. Yeah. Okay. Um. Oh, SA is the clips surround Atmos channels. I, I guess those the ones you can mount on the oh the five hundred SA. Right. Okay. Right. All right. But a stupid builders like that. Mm. <laughs> Uh, well, yeah. sadly, I mean, the reality is, think about it, builders, they don't know anything about home theater, a lot of them. And so they're just like, oh, let's put a bunch of speakers up here. And that's mm -hmm. why, like I said, in Florida, we've seen them mount them in the ceiling, like all of them. And you're like, well, that was dumb, you know? Yeah. So. Aimed at MLP. I guess, you know, it really depends on what's the issue. You know, I always ask when people want to change something back to this one real quick. Yeah. When you want to mm -hmm. change something, the question is, what aren't you happy with? What do you what do you feel is lacking? Do you feel like it's not you don't hear them well? Do you feel like it's like it's not aimed at you well enough to get a good sound? Like what do you feel yeah. like it's is missing? I mean, I'm all for high channels in the front of the room above your your speakers, your front left and right speakers. I'm all for that, mm -hmm. right? Um, but I mean, if you already have you know, speakers in the ceiling use them i would right? use them yeah yeah totally but uh if you're trying to optimize if you're trying to optimize i guess the question would be like how much better would it be if you changed it and yeah. to answer that i'd need to know how bad are they now <laughs> you know what i mean like what if they sound really how much good do they suck them? now right. yeah how <laughs> much yeah how much are you are if you're not happy with it mm -hmm. um what what do you think? Do you think actually moving those and making more holes in your ceilings are, you know, gonna actually be beneficial? I think this is one of those questions. Honestly, you should just take a picture, email us because yeah. it'd be better to take a look because I'd need to see where they're laid out. You know, if they're in a very bad position relative to where you're sitting, it might be better to move them. You know, be. or look at other solutions. But if they're already close to optimal. Maybe you might not need to do that, but it's hard to tell just, you know, with uh, what you've said here. But because you've, you're you sending so many uh, super chats, go ahead and uh, email us and I'll make sure to get you yeah. a, a decent What's answer. The, is, info at dailyhifi.com. Is that it? Yeah. I forget. Yep. Um, And then Reverend Slim, he's he's really the guy he when it comes to knowledge, man. He says, if you're in the Discord for Spatial Audio Calibration Toolkit, post pics of the room. And I'll see what you're working with. Yeah. Uh, very helpful. Mm -hmm. That guy's a legend. Yeah. Uh, I, I like my Apple TV remote and I have three of them at different 
different generations. Yeah, I have, I have two, two, three of them, two different generations. Tim says he's the only, is he the only one on the planet finds the remote touchpad as an okay remote. Yeah, I'm telling you, man. If you have a TV, no, that's the touchpad one. That's the touchpad. Oh, the old, touch, the old, old school old, one. Old, no, no. old, old, old. Mm, one, I don't yeah. know about that. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't, don't know, know about, about that. that. Uh, t -t 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 okay, so Bodhi found it. Let's okay. See so here. Go. Okay, we got another um, super chat. Thank hey. you so much for the super chat. I have one monolith THX 10 inch now, but mono price are not selling in Europe anymore. But I want to buy four subs. Would PB 1000 Pro be better or any tips? Hmm. You know, the, the reason why I can help with that is because I do have a THX 10 monolith THX 10 as well as a PB 1000 Pro, and they match pretty well. I mean, their frequency range is about the same. Mm -hmm. They have about the same amount of output. Uh, they both give up around the same time. So it's a very good match, actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think you're fine. I'm surprised that they don't sell in Europe anymore. Hmm. Those things are heavy. Oh, Maybe there's a huge shipping cost. Maybe, maybe. But yeah, I think it's a, it's a good match for your other one. Um, yeah. Let's see here. Hey, I got to talk to some some of you guys on the phone. I talked to Rob E for like an hour. Chana, you know, you know Rob. Yeah, Rob came and bought a subwoofer off me. He drove uh, to here and bought a subwoofer, an S my SVS PB four thousand years yeah. ago. I was just so, like, all right, I was like, all right, man, you want to drive here? Cool, sure. <laughs> Let's do it. Yeah. <laughs> He was asking about some calibration, so I got to talk to him on the phone. He's cool. Yeah, I am. So, talk to him for a while. Talk to um, to C Big, to Chuck for a while. Chuck, yeah. Talking about all kinds of stuff. Um, you know, we always starts with calibration, but then it always ends up talking about all kinds of random other stuff. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I think that's super cool that we get to talk. Yeah, I mean that's what it's all about, you know, helping people and all yeah. that. Um, Jason asked Michael, "Why are you switching from in ceilings to on ceiling?" Yeah, I was just texting or messaging. So the biggest thing is, so like I said, I have my clips. Oh gosh, it's been. They have like, well, it's like a four digit years. number of those things. I'm like, yeah. I'm like, how do you remember that? Every yeah. single... There's so an the oral joke yeah. in there somewhere, right? Yeah. <laughs> so I have, so for the end scenes, I've got the 5800 C version twos. Um, CDT goes in front of that. So yeah, it's a weird model number. CDT 5800 version wow. two. Um, so they have the angle tweeter angle. The woofer moves a little bit. It's not super uh -huh. uh, amazing, but I'd be going from a six and a half inch driver to a 10 inch driver and having a, um, uh, I was looking up to see how big that, cause I know I mentioned it earlier. Let's see how big that tweeter is. I'm looking here. I don't know if it says, I'm looking, but yeah, the biggest thing is I've heard so many JTR systems. I probably, I think I've had maybe 15 to 20 JTR systems, like full on JTR systems. And every single one of them, I'm just blown away. Okay. So it's a one inch compression driver. I just found it. Mm -hmm. So typically with a compression driver, I know with like my clips speakers, when I went from, um, let's say the, or when I've compared the, reference premiere i've even had i've owned a bunch of clip speakers that had a non-compression driver smaller tweeter um usually the compression driver horn is just it's a significant step up and i think that's part of why when clips made the rf 83s that was a 1.25 inch i don't even know if they use a compression driver with that one but to me, there was a significant improvement when you compare that to, say, an RF7, RF72, RF73. So just a couple of reasons for that. Um, and then I, by then, I would have an all-matching JTR system. And um, like I said, I've always had clips always matching, you know, mm -hmm. bed layer, ceiling, mm -hmm. surrounds. So you just wanted to match or what? And Well, the other thing, too, is like my side. I think I'll probably enjoy the side surrounds, maybe even more than the atmos upgrade because my side surrounds think about this i built that theater room 16 years ago 
and I've always had wide dispersion surrounds, always. So that means I've got a tweeter and a mid-range firing one way and a tweeter and a mid-range firing the other way. So back when, before Atmos, that was kind of the suggestion is that you want to disperse the sound as much as possible, wrap around you so that you can't, you know, localize anything. And then Dolby Atmos came around and there's, there's still some debate on whether or not you can use, like Dolby recommends using wide dispersion. I know they don't want you using them for in ceiling speakers or on ceiling speakers, but it's, it's just kind of hard when you're reading through the manual, whether or not they're saying against it. But I've heard a lot of systems that have direct firing, direct radiating speakers um, for your bed layer. And um, it's just a, it's a better overall sound. So I'm just part of it's curiosity too. It's like, okay, I've always wondered, should I go to a, like a bookshelf speaker? A direct firing speaker and the other thing is my speakers are aimed straight so and they're kind of like my side my two side surrounds are right about head level so i'm five foot eleven so the bottom of the speakers here so that means the tweeters up another what nine or ten inches um so you're probably talking about six and a half feet off the ground i'd love to get that down further but i can't because i don't want somebody smacking their face into it so with the slants um, 110 slants are actually angled down. And so that'll put that sound even lower. So mm. even though I can't pull them down, I think that'll get the sound lower. So are you keeping, uh, think. for the, what does it say uh, on ceiling? Are you keeping them in the same location? Are you going to move them anywhere? Yeah, honestly, that <laughs> I don't know. I'm going to relook at that. And even Tony, he's coming down to help me install them because I don't think they really make a mount. And then his that'll go setup, on the ceiling that'll like hold it. Yeah. Oh, so you might so have to find probably a heavy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They're. Let me see. <laughs> you don't want they're, that crashing down. No, 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 no. They're thirty-two pounds each. So they're not massive, but you definitely want to make sure those are yeah, secure. Yeah, you don't want that on your on your dome. Yeah. And so yeah. he's got the, he's yeah. got the same setup in his. I think he's got six in ceilings, and so he knows how to mount them. So he's okay. gonna help me out with that. All right. So basically, yeah. I think he just he's curious about oral, and he just you know he wants to. See what the deal is. He's curious <laughs> about Oro. <laughs> yeah, my, yeah. My, yeah, my it won't be an Oro or... setup. <laughs> uh, uh, we got this. No I like chance. this. ABC always be calibrating instead of always be closing. Be closing. So you sales folks out there, <laughs> yeah, right. always be calibrating. That's Coffee right. is for closers. Calibrating is for closers. Is that how it goes? Something um, like that. You guys don't know what I'm talking about. Um, uh, hey, techno, did you see my comment earlier? So, so, uh, was saying that Atmos is six speakers max, so with 15 channels, wides are useless, but 11 channel mm -hmm. wides are always in use. So, that's so there is a configuration if you don't have surround back, you can have front wides mm -hmm. and then four height channels, and then you're running 11. So, I haven't tried that yet. Um, so I'm curious to see if there's if the front wides are more active and what information are they sending to the front wides. I don't know. I don't know. So I'll check that out at some point. You know, there's a whole lot, whole lot going on here. Um, but it is interesting. <laughs> Hot ceilings always, nearly always better, but such a hard sell. It'd be like asking my wife, "Hey, can I hang four <laughs> microwave ovens from the ceiling?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Nope. <laughs> Yeah, that's fun. No. Yeah, some of no. them are pretty big, right? Yeah. Especially those ones. Yeah. Um what else? I think I saw a uh, Vidal Man says uh my triaxle speakers are amazing for as surrounds, especially since the direct dispersion wouldn't benefit people seated in the middle of the, mm. of the mouth. Yeah. What is that? Triaxle. Yeah. Triaxle. Is that the um Arendel ones? Arendels. Oh, is that where they have one tweeter on, say, the one, and then they've got a tweeter and a mid-range on the other? Kind of like a bipole, dipole? Tripole. Maybe that's what know. the triaxle. Triaxle. Yeah. I've never heard of a triaxle. I'm try I'm Googling it, too. Cleveland, are you making some stuff up? Triaxle. He's probably just making them up. <laughs> he I hasn't had any sleep. Up. Here it is. The Arendel Sound Triaxle 3D sound okay, He hasn't so had any sound. sleep. Right. Let me see. Is, is yep. make, he's making he's, stuff up. He's yeah. not making it up. It's no, legit. Yeah, I yeah no, I see it. I'm, I'm bringing it up right now. The okay. 1723 triaxle 3. Oh, so, okay. All right. Yeah, like 
Yeah. yeah so you've you got one tweeter on right. And, oh, actually, so they're doing tweeters on the side and then your mid range. And then the, the mid range. Okay. Yeah. Where the hell? What? I mean, I on, show, show me. Yeah. Show me. Should, be a, should be a woofer back there. Two probably. four inch custom built dipolar drivers. So on that's the on the side. Setup. Yeah. Yeah. And then what's in the middle? Maybe like a five and a quarter, six and a half. I'm showing it. Oh, here it is. This one. 13 inch yeah. woofer in the middle. <laughs> is that really how big that is? Oh, it's not no way. Inches, Why are they showing subwoofers? This is the most confusing web page. Yeah. <laughs> Where, They're show, I don't know. What dang, that one know. speaker right there really looks like the Encore a lot, huh? Oh, let's scroll down a little bit. Which one? Like just at first glance, a little bit down. Right, right there. Mm, right there, right oh, there, there, right there. Yeah, down one more. Below. One more. Yep, right there. Dang. Well, it's got that side tweeter, though. Yeah. Oh. Okay, triax. Hmm. Interesting. All right. Well, I don't oh, know man. about that. I'll look, have to look at that a little bit more. Yeah, he said they have tweeters on both sides. And then you guys say Cleveland. I think of Family Guy. Huh? <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. That's, that's good, a villain man's name. Family. Sorry, man. So okay. speaking of calibration, I asked Michael if it would be okay if I if I asked this because I was asking in the uh, in our personal group chat, yeah, about M Wave, I know. Are you still gonna do the calibration shootout? So we're doing a um, room correction comparison. So we'll have I don't know which models we're gonna have. As far mm -hmm. as last year, we did Odyssey, we had Room Perfect, we had an AVR with Arc. Say it right, the Room what? Because Villa Man's here. Room Perfect. Room. Room Perfect. <laughs> What? Right? I was like, uh, I, I, can do, I can't do that. Why? What does he say? It's his intro. He's like, perfect. perfect. Oh, perfect. Uh, let's see. Um, <laughs> I forgot about that. Oh, direct live. Stick around. Okay. So, so yeah. okay. Sorry. Sorry. I have to, I have to go there. <laughs> Room perfect. Direct live. Yeah. Odyssey. Anthem, did you say? Uh, Anthem. We had ARC. Anthem ARC. I think that was it. Maybe there's one more. Okay. I think. But yeah, so basically we had five or six different AVRs and we were able, we just pretty much did them auto calibration. Didn't make hardly any changes to them because we wanted to just see how does, how, is that right? How do different room correction softwares, how do they do automatically? Because the vast majority of people are going to run the calibration. They may make some minor tweaks, but they're not going to do half the stuff that you do, Joe. They're not going to dive deep in there and, and tweak the EQ and build a house curve and all this stuff. Well, pow, that was that absolutely. So that was there too. It really was. <laughs> no, it was seriously. Okay. Yeah. So we right. had my pal. Was, he was just yeah. kidding, but he no, says no. I'm pretty sure we added in there, and so we were able to do fast switching, and so that's the key. We want to make sure that we're able to to switch between between things pretty fast because I don't think our audible memory. Is as good as we like to claim. Same know? same amplifier. We're using like pre outs and then going to the same amplifier so, or built in amplifiers on each one. I too. think they were all using the in, and these were. I'm trying to remember how big the I, one I, is. I wouldn't. How would you switch though? Yeah, I think I you'd know. have to use an external amp, which no, makes sense. No, 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 we had had the, then you have the, to have like a splitter to divvy everything up, right? That's no, what they said had, though. They yeah, had fast switching. Yeah, we had a some kind of switcher. I don't know what brand. OSD brought some as well. We were using some of their stuff. How many speakers in total? So in that room, so it wasn't an Atmos system on that one. That was, I think it was a 5.1. Okay. All right. So just three up front. I think there was two in the back. I was mostly doing the speaker comparison out mm -hmm. on the main stage. And so I really, I mean, I didn't get to go in there and actually listen to it. I popped in like once just to look at it, but. So I wasn't involved in that at all. So Tim, I think sub. you were able to to go in there. So he's saying that we had benchmark amps in that room. Mm. I know we had benchmark there. I don't know what was connected. I'd have to ask Ryan. Um, we had another gentleman, Bob. He kind of configured all that and set it up. In some sub, like his, maybe. Uh, a sub, one sub. We had. I think there was two up front. So I think mm -hmm. it was a five point two. Okay. Set up. Mm -hmm. So and it was a decent sized room. So, I mean, it wasn't small by any means. Mm -hmm. So, that's what he said. <laughs> so, so yeah, Tim, Tim said there was, there was okay. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I think 
I would want to, I'm kind of curious to see yeah. how we could do with just manual calibration. Mm -hmm. I feel like that is a fair comparison. Yeah. You know, because a lot of people buy an AVR processor mm -hmm. based on the calibration, mm -hmm. room yeah. correction. Yeah. And so with our toolkit, we're able to do a lot of manual stuff. So I'm kind of curious to see how well that would stack up compared to mm -hmm. these other room corrections, just using the uh, spatial toolkit. Yeah. Uh, and then hopefully if my app is ready by that time, maybe have Tim run the app and, mm -hmm. you know, do some simple stuff Let's basically yeah. and see yeah. how it compares. Cause I, I'm very curious to see how it compares. Yeah. And I know Chana mentioned, you know, we could put it in like, um, let's say if it's on a Denon, yeah. Preset two. And you so can just is, go back and forth between is, preset one, preset two. Can you switch that? It, and because I don't even remember, I thought you had to go into the menu and then change it, and then it set up switch? preset one as quick quick select. Okay. Uh, one on the remote. Okay. And then okay. do quick select two as preset two on the remote, okay. and that that makes it a lot faster. As long but as we yeah, can do that, there, there is, there is a lot of like, right here. If you just That'd hit option, pain. right, it takes you to that that quick setting. So right. Option Correct. and then reset. And then but one or two. The thing, that's the thing, though. But if we have to do that, that's going to delay that. Mm. That Well, I guess if it was on a side monitor, it wouldn't really matter because nobody would see you changing it. Because the idea is we don't want people to know what we're switching between. Oh, okay. Okay, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. Because then you're adding bias to it or potential bias. Right. If you know that, oh, we switch from this to this. Mm -hmm. Oh, I am hearing a difference now. Oh, yeah. You know. They'll yeah, get a placebo so, effect, right? Yeah. So we're trying to, again, it's not a scientific experiment. We're wanting to provide You just want to see, right? You just want to yeah. see. Yeah. yeah that, not, no, that's all. Um, we're not trying to award a trophy at the end of the day for anything that we do, whether it's a projector side-by-side -side comparison or, you know, we're even wanting to put some TVs in there. How does an OLED compare to a, a yeah. QLED? How it's does... unofficial, right? Yeah. It's not yeah. an official thing. Yeah. But I think yeah, we're not trying to represent like to... what Robert Zone is doing with his shootouts yeah. mm -hmm. i think though if, if you have enough people there it might be interesting to at least get a tally yeah. to see okay w what did most people like what sure. do they like about it yeah just so we can all compare notes you know your event is one that uh is kind of unique you yeah. know no other event would i even bother to ask because yeah. they're not they're, nobody's doing that no 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 it's you know, it's, so I'm it's just one saying, take it to the next level, and yeah. if you could tally it, and then maybe post that somewhere where you know sure. most people like this, and this is what they said about it. This is yeah. you know just to get an idea. Yeah. We're all just here discussing, and yeah. so like you're saying, it's not official. Sure. If they all say, "Hey, uh, Joe's stuff is the best," I mean, yeah, that's cool. It's nice, nice to hear. But it doesn't yeah. mean that it is the best. Yeah. It just means yeah. in that room, that particular day, yeah. it sounded. The best. It means a Joe is the best. That's, yes. That's all that means. Um, yeah. And one thing I yeah, want to do this year is I want to be freed up more. So well, you can experience year, more because you said you didn't, you missed out on a lot of stuff, I, right? I missed out on a lot and I didn't get any content because wow. my thought was, look, I want to make sure that I'm present. You know, it's one of those things I didn't want to show up to my event and just be focused on making content. You know, mm -hmm. I wanted the event to go well. I wanted to make sure. People were having a great time. Of course, I wanted the comparisons to be working. And there was a logistics. We even had food last year. So then I'm managing Ooh. that. Oh, yeah, dude. We had barbecue, Kansas City barbecue. So that was all Ooh. kinds of stuff. I mean, so, I'm, I'm, I'm just hungry right now. So. I'm getting mad hungry right <laughs> yeah. now. Don't talk about food. Right so, yeah. okay. So, so let's just... I'm going to bring in one and possibly even two other videographers mm. to basically capture B-roll, do interviews, a lot of different oh, things cool. like that. Yeah, so that yeah, way it'll the, the free room, me up. Yeah, yeah, you know. I'll be it. a part of some of that because I want to go to each room. Um, because each brand that does like a full room, let's say for instance, like Perlison's doing two rooms. I want to go in and interview them. Let's talk about the R series. Mm. How does that differ from the S series that's in the adjacent room? I want to go. Into I still J couldn't J afford JGR. the R series. I think I need the Z series. <laughs> like, it's like way, 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 way down series, there. The China series. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, um, um, let me know in the comments. I wanted to put Michael on the spot there and yeah, just ask him about totally his event. Totally uh, you know, anybody you want who's the magic in, the, in the chat here, let me know if that's something. That, yeah, that's let, really what Joe's trying Is that something to you'd be interested yeah. in in seeing how well manual calibration stands up to you know some of these fancy ones? And I would right. hope, 
and honestly, I would hope that yours would outperform an auto calibration because the auto calibration is removing the human factor. And the human factor is the things that we can physically see, even though you're doing remote calibration. So you're taking away what you physically hear, you know, <laughs> Joey's say, making oh, sales yeah. over there. Uh, I thought you were talking about a Turo. Oh, yeah, no, yeah. no, 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 Arturo. Oh. Thank you, thank you so much, man. Uh, don't worry. Well, I'll get to your Z do in a minute. You know, ask I'm me talking a about, about fast calibration, though. So, uh, just to be clear, I'm talking about not. You know, usually when you say manual calibration, that means it's going to take you way longer. Yeah, I'm I mean, talking about you using the spatial toolkit, yeah. mm -hmm. doing some basic stuff, basic. level matching, yeah. like real basic, sure, basic, okay. basic, basic stuff. Yeah. So doing that, and then if my app is ready, mm -hmm. I I think that. Someone could finish the calibration on that mm -hmm. manually faster than maybe running Odyssey or Dirac because those take yeah. a long time, to be honest. Yeah. You and run that, that honestly, it's not that, quick. That would be good because we do have so many that we've got to get calibrated. So that's always yeah. a challenge too. So yeah, man, it should be yeah, fun. If people are hey, interested in that, I'm curious. And also off, uh, you know, I think you guys did that last time too, is no EQ right. at all. Yeah. Cleveland had a, a sorry, Villa Man had had a great thing. Maybe you should also pretend to switch and see if people hear a difference. Yeah. Oh, they yeah. <laughs> no, no, the, yeah. So here's the interesting thing. All right, we're switching. So so Jonathan right. had some people over to his home. He's one of the guys in the Kansas City group, and he's got an awesome home theater. It's all JBL. Uh, I forget the model number, but it's mm -hmm. Kind of like line arrays, yeah. But he has it for yeah. all his speakers, Atmos speakers, LCR surrounds everything. It's identical, incredibly immersive. No matter where you walk in his room, you're in this bubble. It's awesome. Um, different sound, but it's it's phenomenal. So he actually did that. He had some. Uh, he was doing a blind AB comparison in his own home. I think it was in his house, and they're switching, and he's like. Yeah, man, I like that better. And they flipped it back and flipped it back, flipped it back. And then he just starts giggling. Mm. And the whole time he said, I didn't switch anything, but yet y'all swear up and down. You heard this. And yeah, so it's happens. weird, man. Like it, our, it our brains it's, 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 can mess yeah. with us. Mm -hmm. So yeah. we're trying Belief. to trying to take as Belief. much subjectivity out of it, you know, mm. the bias. And again, it's not a scientific experiment. At the end of the day, we want to have a ton of fun. We want to give you practical experiences. Mm -hmm. But some things that you can take away physically and go, man, I was able to experience what a butt kicker does. I was able to compare that to a near field subwoofer. And I really like the tactile feel that I got from a near field. Mm -hmm. And maybe the boss platform, you always knew in your brain that that's where the, the base was coming from because it was shaking the platform. Yeah. So it gives you those practical experiences. You can take that home and go, OK, now I want to implement something like this in my setup. So I that's really the goal. I guess for me, it's just that if I'm willing to put the <clears> toolkit, <throat> my calibration method out there for people to test out, to compare, that just goes to show I am confident in it. Mm -hmm. I sure. wouldn't do that. If I knew that it was going to just get smoked, mm -hmm. I wouldn't say anything. Yeah. I'd just stay quiet. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, yeah. I just, that, I just that stay makes quiet. Sense. And, you know, <laughs> no, I don't. I, don't, I believe 100% it's going to smoke those. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna, yeah, there you it's go. not it's even gonna smoke it's not even going to be close it's going to he's going to smoke them like them ribs it's right? it's over it's over for those i i swear I, so you know, i'm it, very confident in that I, and you know usually i'm pretty i'm i'm pretty tame you know i, I tell it as it is it's but it's, it's not it's Get not it's not out of here yeah he's never <laughs> tame. Um, i'm not tame no here, here's here's what what i'm interested in finding out if if this goes down and it's and it's uh we've always been making our purchase decisions of these amplifiers or sorry receivers preamps whatever based on their automatic room correction right mm -hmm. a lot of times sure now i know there's a lot of you like paul that love the <laughs> omaha right he's hanging on man he's hanging yeah, on um he's diehard by the way paul i can't get my stupid movies on my not anyway um <laughs> He's my IT guy. He's like, I would I, I, I hit him up yesterday. Is that what you call him? Your IT guy? I, I, he's my IT I expert. He, I thought my, he was your movie dealer. Attached storage uh, yeah. um, guy. And he's I hit a, him up he's yesterday. He's like, hey, man, I'm setting up my NOS. And he's like, oh, dude, I'm like eight eight bars, eight beers into a bender. Uh, <laughs> hit, hit me up tomorrow. I'm like, oh, crap. <laughs> uh, anyway. He's your movie um, pimp. You know that. Look, if you like like the, the Yamaha A-Day, right 
You like the two channel sound of the Yamaha. You like the DAX. You like the build quality. You like this. And then, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wipe out, wipe out. Oh, this isn't a mirror. It's almost a mirror. It's a camera. I'm looking yeah. at Anyway, no. um, we're not encumbered. Uh, Andrew, awesome, man. The note was a nice touch. Hey, appreciate it, man. I'm telling you, man, my 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 hand and like a dude to kill the Sharpie in the process. Like, hey, who knows? Um, now you're not encumbered. Like if 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 all this works, like this toolkit, Joe's app, you're not locked into a I certain something brand something. or manufacturer. You like the look of the Arcam. You like the just the physical look of the whatever receiver. You like the cool. porthole on the Moran. Yeah, like, yeah. You like that shitty porthole. <laughs> You know, we know people like that. Some guys. Okay. Said eight hours into a bet, into six hours. Okay, there. That's a. I, I was confused. I was like, oh, I was okay. working hard on that one. I did. Yeah. That um. So so with you know with these things that that we've come up with, you can now you're now free to like buy whatever you like, like just the looks, or you like the internal components, and you know you're not tied to the automatic room correction inside the box. Mm -hmm. I yeah. think that is like going to be like the huge thing here. You know, if I could get if I do manual calibration, like that one guy that was all mad last week uh, of this, uh, uh, what is it? The um, AV10, the fifth, yeah, the AV10, and then do a manual calibration on the fifteen hundred dollar Pioneer, and be like, oh, it kind of like sounds pretty similar. Mm -hmm. You know, like you know, who knows? A true calibration should make stuff sound more similar than different. I think it should. At the it end should, of the day, right? it starts, to, you know, my car audio system, my headphones, everything sounds pretty close to the same, right? And that's a good thing. Imagine if everything sounded completely different. How can you, how can you somebody's mix and master it. that somebody's way? Somebody's not doing it right. If everybody is completely different. Yeah. Something's, something's yeah. wrong. Yeah. Something's very yeah. wrong. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, sure. I talked to Floyd Tool one time about calibration. He's like, there's only one real way there's only Proper. one correct way mm -hmm. you know what i mean everybody's trying to do their own thing it's like real correction there's one way to do it and that's it so i the question is what is the correct way yeah. i think i have the correct way yeah i'm sure everybody thinks they have the correct way but trust me mine's correct <laughs> you're, you're uh I don't, I don't know how to say this name, but uh, if Yamaha switched to Dirac, that would be a total game changer. They have so much going for them, but ruin it at the finish line with, well, I got to make a sound like, why pow on, on my on my soundboard here just to say That's it. That's funny. Oh, and if you don't mention their new ugliness, sorry, he doesn't like the looks of the new one. Yeah. Um, yeah. This is the way. This Well, uh, uh, Christian asks, which would you choose between a Moran Simnum 40, the Sony AZ 5000, or the and or the Onkyo RZ50? Um, you know, I have the Sony AZ 3000, it's the cheaper one. Um, I told that Sony retail for? it's like 1600, 1500, okay. 1600. Yeah, I told them to send me that one because I have the Denon 3800, mm -hmm. which is like the same price, right. but then I come to find out that this 3000 doesn't, doesn't have pre outs, and I'm like, ah, mm. crap. That means it's going to be harder for me. A fifteen hundred dollars, sixteen hundred dollar, man, no pre outs. I'm pretty sure it does not have. Let me just. I haven't hey, even really? opened it yet. I find that hard to believe. Okay, well, Sony, right, what look. model? AZ three thousand ES. Two thousand. The new one, seventeen hundred yeah. uh, on on audio advice. Let's, let's look see. at. Let's turn that around. The, yeah, yeah, nothing. No Here. pre outs. Weird. Yeah. That's that's so. Why. And then I think yeah. I know. I'm like, crap, man. I, why did yeah. I tell him to give me this one? I didn't, I should have looked at it first. I figured it'd be a good comparison between that, this and the Denon, but now I'm like, okay, well the Denon's going to win just because it has mm -hmm. uh, pre outs, but you know, what's Sona, interesting? It though? does have pre outs dingling. Yeah. Two. Yeah. No front, Where? left, front, right, surround, surround back center, subwoofer. Where? subwoofer. What are you looking at? I'm looking on there. What I'm on crutch field, unless that's a different one. Yeah. ZA three thousand E. No, no, no. The AZ. Unless that's the, the wrong. ZA is the the older one. Uh, discontinued. It says discontinued okay. on Crutchfield, right? Uh, okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah. All right. My bad. I'm like, it was right there. So it's the Z AZ. AZ is the new line. Yeah. Well, that's AZ. lame. Why they switch it around? Here, I found the Crutchfield one for the AZ. Yeah, yeah that's all they did. They just, they mm -hmm. just, you know, it's kind of stupid. I don't know. 
That's not cool, uh, man. You would yeah. think that they would include that. Yeah, that's something that expensive. But here's the thing: the five thousand is actually not that much far off. So maybe they're just trying to push you to buy the five thousand instead. Right. Uh, Makes sense. Oh yeah, that's bare bones. Looking at the back. Holy yeah, God. it looks like a regular like six hundred dollar receipt. Wow, for, right? that is so weird, man. That's that's shady. <laughs> Oh, yeah. so that's here it is so here it is mike check out this one yeah so this this is the step up from that one right okay. look at this yeah. Not so super for five hundred dollars more right you get the pre-outs and it's 11 channel as opposed to nine mm -hmm. channel right so hmm. i don't know i don't know i'm i'm not too super excited on the sony and and part of it just goes back to you know sony's just always made budget friendly they're um, power supplies have always been pretty underwhelming to say the least. So I'll be curious to see what people say about it, but I don't know. Yeah, we'll see. Man. Bodhi says he wants to trade out his uh Denon 6700 for the Moran Cinema 40. Wow, <laughs> you see what I put in the in the chat or in the what's that? Put the pressure on Michael to allow us to compete in the M wave calibration shootout. <laughs> Right. Manual calibration with the space. I don't think. I don't think you need just, just plus magic Michael's bean software Michael's is greater down. than everything. Oh, I, I put it out is. there. And magic then of course, beans, magic Randall beans. says, "Do what Joe says." <laughs> <laughs> well, you're the boss, man, aren't you, Michael? Make, who, make, do you have, who do you have? Who do you have to it. ask? You can't see. So you me. can't. You, I gotta ask. Uh, I gotta ask nobody. You're the boss, aren't you? We both are. Yeah. We okay. both co owners. All right so, then. Yeah. So let's see what happens. I put it uh, out there though. It's not on me now. Yeah. 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 Uh, Christian is, Sony. So, Christian, you say no Sony. Well, I mean, the last Sony AVR I reviewed was the STR DN 1080, which was like five or six years ago. Mm -hmm. And they haven't changed it or upgraded anything to now. If they haven't changed any of their um, room correction, their auto room correction, yeah, it's kind of the same thing. So, I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, we'll see. Time will, time will tell. Yeah. Um, somebody asked about the Zidu. Was that Arturo? It was uh, a while back. Yeah. Yeah, it was a while back. He, you know, if you have a specific question about it, Arturo, let me know. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, I, I have it behind me. Actually, I was trying to use it over here, but Paul didn't give me proper directions on my NAS, so I can't use anything. <laughs> <laughs> my NAS is just as useless as this Yamaha over in the corner. <laughs> oh, man. Ooh, sorry, that was just me messing around. It's, uh, it's not true. Um, it's, it's good paperweight. Yeah. What else we got? <laughs> Reverence looks funny. Yeah, well, let's see here. I always have to do some, uh, some reads here. So listen to the audio-only version of this podcast at Anchor.fm forward slash daily hi fi if you're interested in just listening to us. And if you want to join the after show, patreon.com forward slash daily hi fi, where we have a lot of fun, talk about stuff that, uh, all kinds of random stuff, uh, secret stuff, stuff that we were not allowed to say or don't want to say here, but never, you know, never against NDA. Uh, I got a funny story for you guys. I was, told, mm. I was I was trying to no for the after show. Mm. Oh, okay. Can't, can't after, oh, okay. Oh, that's a good uh, that's a good lead in. Like uh, Mark Wilson says a Rob reviewed uh, the a Rob a Rob reviewed. I don't know what that means. Uh, the new Sony receivers. He says the new room correction is amazing. Okay, so they have a new room correction. That is great to hear. Mm -hmm. So maybe I'll bust this maybe thing I, open. I, like I said, I, I hope I'm hopeful for them. It's just I'm skeptical. To be honest yeah, with you. for sure. For sure. I mean, yeah, it's been well, a long time since they put out an AV receiver, right? Yeah. I mean, that's like they, four. I mean, I'm when sure I worked, he would Fergus. let you participate in M Wave if you cut that check. <laughs> what? I said, where's Joe's the invoice? looking for a youth man, man deal? He's like, where's the invoice? <laughs> He's looking for a youth man deal. Send the He's invoice ready, first. Uh, Arturo, the you know what I mean? The not bad. I'm ready. I still, um, I I still prefer the. The Zapidi interface, the Zidus kind of has a lot more going on. <clears throat> I do like the. Uh, do you guys? You, do you ever a little spin the reel? There's like a random, so like it's like a slot machine, and it just picks a movie at random. Oh, <laughs> and I'm like, 
Dude, with all the movies I have, and I don't have a huge movie collection. Yeah. I can imagine like people like Paul, like hit random. What what are they gonna get? Yeah. Though you know, <laughs> you should play some sort of drinking game and be like, all right, we we are gonna watch whatever movie. Mm-hmm. They pick at random. Right? Yeah. And then all Speaking of a sudden of, it'll be like the Bachelorette or something. Who knows yeah. what Paul's got over there? Wasn't a movie, but I started watching um, the other night. Jessica and her friend went to our local. We've got a festival here, Strawberry mm-hmm. Festival. Okay. So they were over there for a couple hours. So I'm like flipping through and Hulu. And and I came across a, uh, it's called The Selection. Is it Selection? Yeah, I think it's called The Selection. So it's basically like the Navy SEALs, how they mm. start out with like 30 people. And they just, in day, by day five, they were down to six people. Everybody else quit. That's crazy, man. I mean, these are. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. You know, just a thing. But, you know, they weed out the weak, like basically they not even the weak. They weed out those that don't want to be there. And then they start weeding out, you know, based on skill and other things. Right. My um, situations. It's pretty intriguing. I've always enjoyed stuff like that. My stepbrother was in the Navy and he tried out for uh, SEALs. And a lot of the things that they try, they get you to do mm-hmm. are completely impossible. Mm-hmm. Do 300 dips in in a minute. Yeah. They did a and, thousand and they, setups. Yeah. So, like, the, well, yeah. well, what they want to, they want to <laughs> see who will actually try it and yeah. put their all into right. it instead that's of people right. being like, oh, that's impossible. That's already right. like a different, that's not the mindset that they want. Correct. That's so, like, you're gone. Yeah. Right. It's that, that's part of like their right. selection. Yeah, uh, their Christian, whole their whole thing is never give up. Yeah, Let's yeah. So it. Christian says uh, they're using the spatial room correction that they developed for the HTA nine. Ah, okay. Yeah, I All said, right. I said we'll see. Was okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. More marketing <laughs> and performance. Hey, you yeah. know, that's, that's true though. I yeah. mean, the cool thing is that each speaker has a mic. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Oh well, they can't do that in this. Oh, no, they can. can they? they can find each other and all this stuff. I mean. I mean, hey, left yeah. speaker. Hey, right speaker. How are you? What's up? What's going on back there? Surround speaker. Yeah, like that. You have this whole thing where you can kind of move, move the sound <clears throat> stage. And then when you do that, you're like, no, no. Ah, oh, they sorry. They are sorry. Phones. I'm just telling you the truth. Yeah. It's good. I mean, it was a good system, but it's not. Come on. Yeah. Um, if you, it was all right. Uh, if you guys want do want to watch something cool, <laughs> um, check out Last of Us. They just had the season finale. Yeah. Uh, last night, pretty uh, pretty intense movie. The music is good. Admos is pretty, actually, pretty good. And that's from the that we were watching from the Roku Ultra. Not not even anything. Last not that it's not special, but not anything really, really like above above board. I'm making it sound like the Roku oh. sucks. It does. Uh, it's pretty good. But there are better. Options. What's that dude's name? Who Pedro? Pedro? Isn't that it? Pedro oh the oh the main guy uh I forget the Mandalorian guy Mandalorian yeah yeah Pedro Pascal oh Pedro Pascal yeah well you know the funny part is in Last of Us the girl is mm. Leanna it plays Leanna Mormont in Game of Thrones <laughs> and Pedro was also in Game of Thrones so is, are these HBO shows just using all these Game of Thrones actors in new, in new Probably. series <laughs> did you guys see the uh, Saturday Night Live with him no I did a while back. Mm-hmm. Where they did like a Mario Kart thing. Oh, dude, mm-hmm. you gotta watch that. He's like, it's a me, Mario. <laughs> so they do it in the whole, uh, like kind of the theme of this show, which I haven't watched, but like he's supposed to be Mario, but they do it like all dark. Oh, okay. So he turns on, like, it's a me, it's Mario. Me, Mario. Okay. <laughs> I'll have to check that out. Yeah. Hilarious. Um, um yeah, Bodhi said it looks like he watched it. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, that thing's um, funny. Is the Zidu the answer to Apple TV and many others like it? No. No. Zid- Zidu is like something totally different. It's like a Zipedi or an NVIDIA or like a Plex. It's like a movie server. It's a, it's a thing where you can access movies on a network or, or, or a hard drive that's directly mm-hmm. connected. I wouldn't call it like an Apple TV. Yeah, a little bit different. What is that? What's the name of that Sony, the new AVR? The AZ okay. 3000 ES or the AZ 5000 ES or the AZ 7000 AZ, ES. What's the, the, the craziest one? AZ what? 7000 7, ES. 
7,000 ES. Yeah, All it's right, like so, you know, 2,500 bucks or something. No. There we go. 30, Is it more? 3, more 000? than that? Yeah. 30, See, that's, wow. I okay, think that's the on. other thing. I'm thinking Sony receiver, three something. I'm like, man, there's, what are they doing? There are just yeah, certain just, things that you buy from certain brands, right? Yeah. Like you buy, you can buy a Sony camera. Right. You can right, buy a Sony correct. OLED. 100%. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 100%. Sony subwoofer. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. No. <laughs> Sony speakers. You didn't have to convince me on that. Yeah, Sony speakers? Yeah. Explode speakers? I don't know yeah. about that. <laughs> the Sony uh, Explode? I don't know. Yeah. Um, I don't Mario get... meets Mad Max. <laughs> yeah, $3,300. <laughs> 13 channel. Okay. So yeah. here we go. So there it is. You guys see that okay? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So. Here's what I want to say about Sony is they are the best at just making up names. Just mm. they they like there's a technology that everything has, right? But they'll just they'll make call a new it name something for different, it. yeah. Yeah, and then makes you want it. Like what? Um in the TV space, everybody's going micro LED. They mm -hmm. call theirs crystal LED. See? Oh, wow. What, the is, what is their processing? They're smoking called? Crystal. There's pro <laughs> they're um X XR cognitive processor. See what see what yeah, I mean? Yeah, it's the cognitive yeah. cognitive pro it's not it's not AI, it's the cognitive Yikes. processor. Uh center channel enhancements include center speaker lift up, acoustic center sync, and dual <laughs> center speaker. <laughs> yeah, you know, see? What? hey, that sounds really cool. What the fuck does that mean? I'm telling you, this is what they're really good at. Look. Okay, let's see what else. There's gonna there's gotta be more here. Uh, newly designed frame beam based chassis. Okay. All right. All right. Hold on a second. See more features. Any more? They, I know they have a new name for their uh, fine sound resistor. Is that a real thing? I don't know. I don't I know. Did, they did. They, they made it up. It's a real thing. Yeah, they just, they just make up, uh, they just coin terms. And they have good graphics. Hold on a second. There is 360 spatial sound mapping. <clears throat> what is that? Is it, yeah. Can anybody definitely tell me what that is? Yeah. Okay, so exclusive 360 spatial sound mapping technology reproduces a physical sound field that can adapt to your environment and create an experience that feels like a movie theater or concert hall. Okay, so hold on a second. So DSP. Well, is this is I mean anything there... Does any of that say, uh, you know, can Odyssey do any of that stuff? I mean, I mean, I in all tell. fairness, though, every company does that. I mean, just about yeah. every company. I mean, they're going to they add their but, terminology. But, but Yamaha says YPOW. <laughs> so, you know, Pioneer says macaque. You know, macaque. What I'm saying? So some are just better than others. That's, That's all I'm funny. saying is these guys are really good. Digital cinema, cinema auto calibration. What is that? Nine. Huh? IX nine, right? Nine. Okay. Um, you see what I'm saying though? Yeah. They're just really good at this whole thing. Dual center speaker. Hey, see, there look at it this. Is. Here we go. What does that mean? Center Acoustic speaker center lift. Sync. All right. Matches the audio to your compatible bra. Okay, so that's just using your TV as a mm -hmm. speaker, right? And then they have this new one where, oh, we're gonna delay the speaker so their timeline. Like, yeah, of course, that's what you should do. Yeah. Is that a new technology? Dual center speaker, okay, works with the second uh, speaker to more accurately replicate sound with large screens. Okay. I think a lot of people want that feature. That's cool. Yeah. Center speaker, okay, so center speaker lift up raises the sound from the center speaker to match what's on the TV. So it sounds like the, it up. The, the people are talking out of the TV, right? Is that It just, it just yeah. lifts it right up. <laughs> So I guess you don't need a trim off, right? Supposedly, yeah. According yeah, to these guys. So then this is a steal at three thousand dollars. <laughs> that's funny. There's no need for trim off because this yeah, does exactly know. the same thing. DSEE. -E? Okay, that one's not so good. <laughs> <laughs> um, but anyway, yeah. they're they're really good at this. Thirteen whole naming. channels of pre outs. Hey, you know, that's not bad. So, yeah, I don't know. I'm I'm down to test it. I'm not hating on it. I'm actually saying that they're really awesome at marketing, which mm -hmm. they are. Yeah, yeah. And and they have a good uh, loyal fan base. Sure. Right. 
Yeah, it's just their oh, track yeah, record. I mean, maybe they... is not. It's not there yet. But maybe this right. is awesome. Who knows? And, I, and like I said, I guess that's where the skepticism comes because I'm looking at past performance. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and I hope, like I said, I hope they have made some improvements because that's going to cause Yamaha to be better. It's going to cause <laughs> auto, you know, Ankyo to be better. It's going to cause funny. all that because I What's said funny Yamaha. Over there? Oh, he's still that's his favorite man they said, he said they're gonna make you wipe out better like so it's just they like haven't done it. anything to okay they added the little bass like thingamajig to it oh gosh so you're just All skeptical right, it's okay to be I it's okay to be skeptical because yeah. like let's say if if pile yeah right you guys have seen pile products if they sure. came up with a new right. pre-pro i wouldn't be excited yeah. pre-pro 200 bucks right yeah you're like Mm, the price is uh, or a pre pro for five thousand dollars. Even I'd, then, I'd be, you'd be, I'd like, be oh, even more skeptical. I'm sure. like, really, Paul yeah. has never made anything that's been amazing. And I see, yeah, so, the Villa Man does have right? a trend off. So yeah, yeah I saw that. I saw that. Congratulations. <clears throat> you got the that's why he hasn't been doing YouTube videos. He's trying to know. He's like, he had to make some money. He passed he got he six jobs. He passed out after buying that. He's in a coma for a while. Money on the kid, money on the trend off. Yeah. Trinov's like the second kid now, and now, and like the first kid is keeping him awake. Second kid, the Trinov, is also keeping him awake. Oh, I gotta That's figure this out. Funny. I gotta hear this stuff. <laughs> oh man, yeah. Sony's yeah. about to ship all these AVRs to you three scr- scoundrels trashing them. <laughs> I'm not trashing them. I just I'm skeptical. I, I right, already so got here, one, dude. It's sitting right here's here. The thing. I had a I had a pastor that used to always say, "Don't tell me, show me." <laughs> and I think that's what it's going to take. I mean, don't tell me your product is amazing and it's worth $3,500. You know, it's yeah. going to have to get in some real hands, whether it's me, Chana, Joe, whoever. Yeah. But let several people get this unit. Scoundrel. And let's just hear what yeah. people yeah. appreciate. Real it. hands. Yeah, so you're saying, exactly. Oh, you're saying the experience. other reviewers aren't real hands? E- yeah. I didn't say that. E- I just said, I think there <laughs> should that's be. That's why people are always, you know, <laughs> really always trying to start some. Yeah. E- you heard that? No, he does I'm not mean that. that. I think there needs to be multiple people and let's just see, is there some commonality? Yeah. Is there some commonality Mm -hmm. through that? And if there is, and they all say, man, this stuff is actually rock solid. Then all right. Prime example, when Emotiva first came out with their amplifiers and Mm -hmm. subwoofers, I'm sorry, not Emotiva, when Monoprice, Uh I had the same thing. I'm thinking, I love them. I love Monoprice. They make great inexpensive cables, but they, there's no way they can make an awesome subwoofer. I mean, come on. This mm. is gonna be this mm. is gonna be trash, is what I'm Who? thinking. Yeah, oh, yeah. Right, right. Monoprice. Monoprice, yeah. But then I found out, okay, they actually Hobie was smart. He contracted with a guy that knows what he's doing and now is the owner of Perlison. Mm-hmm. He knows how to design subwoofers. Okay, oh, yeah. there's some value there. Mm-hmm. He he yeah. contracted with ATI. ATI's been making amazing amplifiers for a long time. Okay, you know, so then it the skepticism was like, okay, well, let me at least give it a shot now. So you're so saying kind of it can out. actually work to their advantage also. So sometimes when you're not expecting very much, you're like, oh, correct. Yeah, that's I'm surprising. Pleasantly surprised by yeah. the performance. So yeah, it can mm-hmm. it can work in their favor also. And yeah. also, if you're if you have high expectations, yeah, sometimes that works against the company. Yeah, because yeah. you're like, oh, this is gonna be great, and then you get it, you're like, oh, it's okay. I thought it was gonna be better than that. Or it wasn't what I expected. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Sure, but uh, yeah, let's get to the after show. I want to talk and I want to see if Fred got his uh AV10. I want to see what's up with these guys. Oh, yeah, and I I, I gotta jump out at 6 30. Yeah, yeah, handle I, I got a hard 6 30 cut off okay. today. I need to eat too, but I know, I know. I'll I be in the after show for a little bit. Or something like I'm that. gonna have to bail first yeah, thing yeah, in the morning. Sure. They're in, yeah, they're installing our shutters. I gotta get all the blinds off of the house and I gotta finish my video so that tomorrow we can pack, get those installed, and be ready to head out Wednesday morning. Hit the slows, baby. Have fun, oh, bro. Yeah. Have fun. Yeah. Have fun, and then talk to your business partner. And let's see yeah. what happens. Yes, talk if to he all says, the no, other it's scoundrels. All yeah. It's all <laughs> good. I just want to say, I just want to say, if the answer is no for whatever reason, yeah. and you know, you don't want me to, you don't want me to smash on the on the competitors. <laughs> I get it. You know what I mean? I it's all good. Bit. If that's the answer, then that's the answer. But I offered. All right. Yeah. So, all right. All right. <laughs> Uh, thank you, everybody, for hanging out for the Daily Hi-Fi Podcast. We do this every Monday, 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern. 
and I hated that um, daylight saving time. So hopefully uh -huh. you, you guys didn't didn't fare too bad with it. And if you wanted to um, be in the after show with us, go to patreon.com slash daily high five, become a patron and get access to the video chat that happens right after the show. For those of you. Yes. And, and, we, and by the way, I, if I was aggressive on this, it's because of that uh, daylight saving time. I'm, I'm blaming it on the daylight saving <laughs> lack of sleep. You're pretty. You're a lot. So you're I all apologize cranky, huh? if that's how I came off today. That's, um, that's daylight saving time. Yeah, Villa man, thank you so much for hanging out in the yeah, chat, man. man. Um, to great, glad to see you back and making videos. If you guys haven't subscribed to his channel, make sure you do so. He great videos, great guy too. Yeah, um, super cool, man. Yeah, I'll Appreciate shoot you an you, email, uh, Cleveland. I, we got to get you out of disc and uh, check it mm. out. Yeah. And uh, yes. So everybody that's in the after show or that will go to the after show. We will see you there. Everybody else. We'll see you next week. Have a great week, guys. See you guys.